Thank you. 
Hello, hello, check, 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 Pertidia, Kelly Sariva. Yarn Kelty the Rivaga. You are Matar Tidin Kelsey. Hello, check, 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 hello. Check, check, hello. Check, hello. Check, 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 check. Hello, check, 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 hello, hello, check, check, mado, Maraya, six twenty check mado, Patamando, six twenty and a mismatch, I there check mado, check, 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 hello, check, check, hello. Hello, check, check, check. Check, check, check. Hello, check, check. Check, check, check. check. Check, check, check. Sir, six twenty good. Hello, hello. Check, check. Hello, hello. Sir, six twenty good. Check, check, check. Six twenty three. Check, check. Students, please maintain silence. The guests are arriving. Put your mobiles on silent mode and maintain silence.
please maintain silence and raise when the guests are arriving. Please stand up. The students are requested to maintain silence. To raise new questions, new possibilities, to regard old problems from a new angle require creative imagination and marks real advance in science and technology, a quote by Albert Einstein. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I, Dr. Shamla C, Associate Professor, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, GSSS IETW, feel privileged to be the master of ceremony for the fourth edition of the flagship annual subsection international conference of the IEEE India Council Indiscon 2023 with the theme computational intelligence and learning systems organized by IEEE Mysore subsection technically co-sponsored by IEEE India Council and IEEE Bangalore section sponsored by Boeing India Private Limited and hosted by GSSS Institute of Engineering and Technology for Women Mysuru Today we gather from various corners of the globe united by a shared purpose to foster collaboration exchange knowledge and address pressing challenges in technology we are privileged to have distinguished delegates esteemed speakers and participants from diverse fields joining us today 
their expertise and collective wisdom will undoubtedly enrich our discussions over the course of this conference. I take this opportunity to welcome you all to this esteemed conference, an international platform to explore, discuss, and innovate. Throughout the next few days, we will delve into a wide array of topics, ranging from computational intelligence foundations, systemic aspects and ethics, robots and softbots, to applications of computational intelligence. As we immerse ourselves in this knowledge exchange, let's remember that the power of this conference lies in the ideas we share, the connections we make, and the potential impact our collective efforts can have on the world. Now, let us begin the event by seeking the blessings of the great visionary of this institute, late Professor B.S. Pandit, sir, Honorary Founder Secretary, R. Any start without seeking the blessings of the Almighty is incomplete. I would like to call upon Ms. Janavi Inamda, fourth semester EC department, IETW, to render the invocation. Pahi gaja mukha, pahi sumukha, pahi siddhi vinayaka, pahi suragarna nayaka. Pahi gaja mukha, pahi sumukha, pahi siddhi vinayaka, pahi suragarna nayaka. Shingapur dodu bandu nele siha kambada vinayaka. Shingapur dodu bandu nele siha kambada vinayaka. Bandu bedu ve undu varakodu. Bandu bedu ve undu varakodu. Tandu kodu ve nu modaka. Pahi gaja mukha, pahi sumukha, pahi siddhi vinayaka, pahi suragarna nayaka. Bhakti indali ninda padava mutti prathane maaduve. Bhakti indali ninda padava mutti प्रार्थने मारुवे भक्षगण तंदर पिसोता भक्षगण तंदर पिसोता पुष्प पूजे मारुवे पाही गजा मुखा पाही सुमुखा पाही सिद्धि विनायका पाही सुरगण नायका पाही सुरगण नायका Pahi Suragarna Nayaka. Thank you, Ms. Janavi, for the devotional rendering. We have Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni, Conference Chair, Indiscon 2023, Chair IEEE Mysore Subsection with us. Dr. Sudarshan obtained his B.E. degree in ECE in 1996. He then graduated with Ph.D. in Electrical Engineering from Old Dominion University, Virginia, USA, in the year 2004. He joined Sri Jaijamarajendra College of Engineering, now recognized as JSS Science and Technology University, Mysuru, in 2007. He is currently working as professor in the same university, having guided eight Ph.D. students published more than 20 Scopus Index International Journal articles and nearly 40 international conference articles in the domains of control systems and machine learning. He has been a guide for hundreds of students to achieve excellence at national and international level. Today, we have many such eminent people amongst us. To extend a cordial welcome to all the distinguished guests, authors, and participants, I now invite Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni, Conference Chair in Discon 2023, to offer a warm welcome to all.
very good afternoon. Uh, it's a very warm day uh, in the rainy season at the beautiful city of Mysore. I feel privileged and honored uh, to make this welcome speech for the Indiscon 2023. So gathered in front of you, a galaxy of luminaries. So I sincerely welcome all of them. To start with, Dr. Miguel Garcia Torres, Pablo de Olaved University, Spain. I welcome you to City of Mysore. and Chair of IEEE Bangalore Section, Founder of Cyber Physical Systems Initiative, former CVP and CTO Samsung, Dr. Alok Nath Day. I welcome you, sir. I welcome uh, Mr. Puneet Kumar Mishra. He's there on the online with us for this event. I welcome you, sir. It's because of this beautiful host institute and visionaries who dreamt of empowering women for education. I sincerely welcome Srimati Vanaja Pandit, Honorary Secretary GSSS for this event. So I also welcome Dr. M. Jagannath Chennai, President GSSS for this event in my absence here. I welcome the AO of GSSS, Srimati Anupama B. Pandit for this event. I welcome the Honorable Principal, Dr. Shukumar M. Principal G plus IEPW. I welcome CEO Pratap Kumar sir, Joint Secretary G plus. I welcome Sri B K Nataraj, member G plus. I welcome the General Chair of Indiscon 2023, Dr. Parmesha Chari B. So apart from the uh, luminaries on the stage, we have a host of dignitaries who have come all the way from different parts to attend this event. I first of all welcome Dr. Prerana Gaur, Chair-elect IEEE India Council. I welcome Mr. Sabrina G. Uh, Dr. Dr. John Jose, Vice Chair, Industry Academia Collaboration, IIT Guwahati. Dr. Rajashree Jain. 
I sincerely welcome Mr. Bapu Bindumadhava, Vice Chair, IEEE India Council. <clears throat> I welcome Professor Mohammad Kasim, Chair, IEEE Kerala Section. I wholeheartedly welcome Sri Abdul Kayum Ansari, Chair IEEE Delhi Section, has come all the way from Delhi. I, I welcome Dr. Chandrakan Kumar, Vice Chair IEEE Bangalore Section. I welcome Dr. Vargis, life member, IEEE. I welcome Dr. Bindu Thomas, Chair 2021, IEEE Mysore subsection. She's a founding chair of IEEE Mysore. I welcome all the India Council members, Bangalore section members, and IEEE Mysore subsection Execom members to this Indiscon 2023. I wholeheartedly welcome all the faculty members of GSSS, all the young students of this beautiful institute. Welcome to Indiscon 2023. I welcome. I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would like to extend a hearty welcome to Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni. Welcome, sir. A request to the audience. Request all of you to, I mean, uh, to not to log into the YouTube version because we're having an echoing problem. Request all of you, as I'd already in, initially announced, please switch off your mobile data and put your mobile on silent mode. We have to, we are having a technical problem here. The voice is echoing. Please cooperate. Thank you. Shubham Karoti Kalyanam, Arogyam Dana Sampada, Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya, Deepa Jyotir Namostute. Salutations to the light of the lamp, which brings auspiciousness, health, and prosperity, which destroys inimical feelings. Lighting of a lamp is considered auspicious before beginning an event. I invite all the dignitaries on the dais to come forward and formally inaugurate the fourth edition flagship Annual Subsection International Conference of the IEEE India Council in this con 2023 by lighting the lamp.
Reading like a, a full man, conference, a ready man, and writing an exact man. Listening to presentations to inform you of what others are doing will inspire research ideas of your own and will expose you to different styles of presentation. Hence, attending a conference is a professionally rewarding experience. Now, to read all about the fourth edition flagship annual subsection international conference in this 2023 and to elaborate on the registration process involved in the conference, I request Dr. Parmesha Chari Bidi. General yeah. Chair and in this 2023 SAC Chair, IEEE Bangalore section. Uh, Dr. Parmesh Chari PD is currently working as a professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at Nitya Minakshi Institute of Technology, Bengaluru. He has completed his BE degree in ECE and MTech in Digital Communication from VTU, Belgavi and completed PhD in Electronics from Jain University, Bangalore. He has a total of 20 plus years of teaching and research experience and he has worked at various positions and places like Karnataka, Kerala, and Mauritius. He is recognized as research guide at VTU Belgavi. Two of his research scholars are awarded with PhD, and currently five research scholars are pursuing PhD degree under his supervision. He is currently serving as a distinguished speaker by ACM and IEEE virtual speaker by Virtual Bureau Speaker Program. He is the recipient of IEEE Bangalore Section Outstanding Volunteer Award, IEEE Bangalore Section Best Branch Counselor Award, and Outstanding Reviewer LCVR Signal Processing Award. I call upon Dr. Parmesha Chari Bidi, General Chair in this 2023, to present an overview of the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, on the dais, off the dais, my fellow IEEE members and participants, a very good afternoon to one and all and who are present here and also for the one online. It is my great honor and privilege to welcome all of you to the esteemed Indiscon 2023 flagship conference. As the general chair of this remarkable event, I am filled with immense pride and pr gratitude to witness the convergence of brilliant minds from around the world to discuss and explore the process of gentlemen, computational is, intelligence yes. and learning. On the desk, First of all, I express my fellow IEEE members to and participants for a very good afternoon to one another and who are present especially here meaningful and also for the one as it takes place in the very city that has played a pivotal role in my academic journey. It was in this city and especially that has shown several progress in my career and it is here that I witnessed numerous milestones in my academic growth. A special mention and feel thankful to GSSS IWO. I owe much of my success to the support and the inspiration shown upon me, and I am truly humbled to have the opportunity to host this event in, in, in its embrace. 
Indiscon is the flagship annual subsections international conference of the IEEE India Council. Indiscon 2023 is the fourth flagship annual subsection international conference of the India IEEE India Council organized by IEEE Mysore subsection under IEEE Bangalore section and being hosted at GSS Institute of Engineering and Technology Forum in Mysore. A brief history of and journey of Indiscon. Indiscon is the IEEE India Council Subsections Conference to be held in IEEE Subsection Geographical Area every year. The first of its kind, IEEE India Indiscon is organized during 2020. The first flagship annual subsection international conference of IEEE India Council organized by IEEE Visas Bay Subsection under IEEE Hyderabad Subsection hosted at Engineering Vishakapatnam during 3rd to 4th October 2020. The second IEEE Indiscon 2021 is organized by IEEE Nagpur Subsection under IEEE Bombay Subsection hosted at Vishweshwaraya National Institute of Technology VNIT Nagpur during 27th to 29th August 2021. The third flagship Indiscon happened during the year 2022 was organized by IEEE Bhuvaneshwar subsection under IEEE Kolkata section hosted at Kalinga Institute of Industrial Technology KIIT deemed to be University Bhuvaneshwar during 15 to 17 July 2022. And now we are witnessing the fourth edition of Indiscom flagship conference at GSS IW. Now I would like to share the few insights about IEEE for those who are not familiar with it giving insights of IEEE, especially in front of such eminent personalities. We know that IEEE is the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, is the world's largest professional organization with more than 450,000 members in, one, in over 160 countries around the world. Association with the technical professional body will help in receiving the recognition by the accreditation bodies like NBA and NAC. Especially for the benefits for students, they can participate for IEEE exciting contests like IEEE Extreme and Hackathon. They can also apply for awards, MS scholarships. Though I, they, they can, students can also apply for travel grants. Then student branches can apply for project funds. The student can also participate for top technical conferences at low member rates. Once you become an IEEE member, you are, an you are an, having an opportunity to become volunteer and give back to the society. In IEEE, there are 30 presenting the wide range of IEEE technical interest. Also, IEEE is not limited to only computer science and electronics, all branches of engineering and even, man even management people can also join IEEE and can start various society chapters. Coming back to Indiscon 2023, the theme of this year's conference is computational intelligence and learning system, which represents the driving force and behind uh, groundbreaking advancement in the realm of artificial intelligence and machine learning. As we gather here, we recognize and transmit transformative potential of these technologies in shaping our future across various domains from healthcare and finance to transportation and beyond. Throughout this event, we curated a diverse and comprehensive program featuring distinguished keynote speakers, renowned researchers, and talented young scholars. Together, we will develop and cutting edge research and innovative applications, discuss challenges and collaborative device solutions that will lead us towards a smarter and more sustainable future. Indiscon 2023 proved to be very popular and received submissions from all over the world to name a few USA, Japan, China, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, UK, Spain, and also from premier institutions like IITs, IIITs, NITs, ISRO, DRDO, and NAL in India. The conference committee, program committee, had a very challenging task choosing high quality submissions. Each paper was peer reviewed by the several independent referees of the program committee and based on the recommendations of the reviewers, 173 out of 850 papers were uh, selected, finally accepted for oral presentation. This conference is not a just form, form, forum for present, presenting papers. It is an occasion to foster connections, cultivate collaborations, and spark new ideas. I encourage all of you to engage in vibrant discussions and exchange knowledge and build networks that will extend for behind these few days for deliberations. Furthermore, I extend my deepest gratitude to our esteemed organizing committee whose relentless efforts and commitment have made this conference possible. Their dedication and hard work have ensured that 
every aspect of this event reflects and reflects the excellence we strive for the academic community. On behalf of IEEE Bangalore section and Mysore section, we wish to express sincere thanks to the keynote speakers, authors, session chairs, technical program committee members, and reviewers who are responsible for the success of this conference. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge the sponsors, partners, whose unwavering support has blustered the success of this conference. This belief in our, their belief in our vision speaks to the significance of our effective endeavors in the field of computational intelligence and learning systems. In conclusion, I wish you all a stimulating, rewarding experience throughout this conference. May our time together inspire us to push the boundaries of computational intelligence and learning, and may it mark at another milestone in our academic and professional journey. I take this opportunity to thank Dr. Devabhrita Das, Chair IEEE India Council, Director of IEEE Bangalore, and Dr. Alok Nadde, Chair IEEE Bangalore Section, for giving an opportunity to be part of this conference. And thanks to Mr. Puneet Kumar Mishra, Vice Chair Technical Activities, IEEE India Council, who guided me towards the IEEE global level. I would like to thank Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni, Chair IEEE Mysore Subsection, for extending his all support to the uh, for this conference. I would like to thank the Execom members of IEEE India Council and IEEE Bangalore Section and IEEE Mysore Subsection for supporting us to organize this conference. And I would like to thank the President, Dr. M. Jaganashanai, GSSSR, Srimati Vanija B. Pandit, Honorary Secretary, GSSSR, Sri Bharat RK, Member and CEO, GSSSR, Srimati Anupama B. Pandit, Administrative Officer, GSSSR, and Dr. M. Shukumar, Principal, GSSSIW Mysuru, and the management of GSSSIW for providing us with all possible logistic support towards organizing this conference. Thank you, and let us embark on this exciting intellectual expedition together. Thank you all. Thank you, sir, for that impressive report. GSSS IETW is one of the premier technical institute in the country, which has received many accolades to its credit. To know more about the genesis and founder members of this prestigious institution, I request Srimati Anupama B. Pandit, Administrative Officer, GSSS R, a highly principled, dignified personality, having experience in teaching and administration, daughter of the great visionary of this institute, late Professor B.S. Pandit Sir and Honorary Secretary Srimati Vanija B. Pandit, Madam, to come over. I now invite Srimati Anupama B. Pandit, patron in Discon 2023, to come over and enlighten the audience about our institute. Thank you, ma'am. Namaste. I, Anupama Pandit, serving this institution as administrative officer, feel immensely proud and honored to stand here before you all today to walk you through the birth and genesis of Gita Shishu Shikshana Sangha, founded by Professor B.S. Pandit. Professor Pandit, founder of Gita Shishu Shikshana Sangha, was born on June 1st, 1936, to Rukmini Bai Pandit and Srikanta Pandit as their eighth child. The most favored child of his mother, Rukmini, he as a child exhibited the traits of a leader. It was her vision way back in the 1940s to provide education to the girl child. She had a strong belief that if a family has to progress and in turn the society would progress, which would eventually lead to prosperity of the nation as a whole. She founded Gita Shishu Shikshana Sangha in 1940 to inculcate the timeless values and wisdom from the holy text, the Bhagavad Gita, to the children of Mysuru, along with reading and writing skills in Kannada. It was back then that her son and the founder of GSSS, Professor Pandit, was impressed with the fact that it is only education that can truly liberate a person from the shackles of ignorance and exploitation. Professor Pandit, after completing his schooling, enrolled for an undergrad degree in pure sciences at St. Philomena's College, Mysuru, and obtained his master's degree in physics from Sardar Vallabhai Patel University in Gujarat. He served Sharda Vilas College, Mysuru, for a brief period before joining Sri Jai Chamarajendra College of Engineering, which was being established by the JSS Mahavidya Pita in 1966. 
While he worked for the establishment of SJCE, he took upon the responsibility of the NCC unit, he being an NCC officer himself, who rose from being a cadet to the rank of a major, during which he served the guard of honor to the vice president of India, Sri Gopal Swarup Patak, and the rare honor to serve the guard of honor to the last king of Mysuru, Sri Jai Chamara Jendra Wadayar. Professor Pandit was committed to restart the school that had hence shut down after the demise of his beloved mother. He started the work for the same by registering GSSS as a society in 1975. It was not until the 1980s that the task of starting the school took shape. With the trust and support of some benevolent Mysoreans, a piece of land measuring about one acre was sanctioned in Siddhartha Nagar to start an English medium school. And that marked the birth of GSSS that would one day grow so big and strong that its presence is felt not only in Karnataka, but India and abroad as well. Gita Bharati School was established in 1981 with just one classroom, eight children and one teacher. Classes were added every year, and it was in just another five years that the Bantwal Madhav Shanoi High School was added in the year 1986, and the much-required pre-university college was added in 1988. GSSS Summa Subha Mahalakshmi First Grade College was started in 1991 with a BSc course in Computer Science, Physics, and Mathematics. This came to Mysuru at a time when the managements of many flourishing and established educational institutions of those times were apprehensive about investing huge amount of money on computers. A computer lab with the latest computers was set up to let the students get the best learning environment and facility. This only goes to show the progressive thinking of our founder, Professor Pandit, and his vision way back then that it is computers that hold the key to the future and that the students must be provided with the latest and best facility to acquire the knowledge and skills. Today, this college is settled comfortably in a sprawling green campus with an annual intake of 220 and the college has 475 boys and girls on roles pursuing their graduation programs in computer applications, commerce and management. While all the institutions he started were flourishing well, he still had one unfulfilled wish. The promise he had made to his mother Rukmini Bai to be the game changer in the field of education to girls and empowerment of the girl child. The idea of Beti Bachao, Beti Padao in recent years has received an impetus from the government in a big way, stressing on the fact that the secret of a stable, healthy, progressive family was educating the girl child. Back in those times, though education was given to girls, it was not important to make them pursue a career. A rare exception, we saw women in the field of education or sometimes in the banking sector, yet technical education to girls was something that was rare and sometimes they were also denied despite being deserving and brilliant. He understood that giving technical education to girls would not only contribute to the country's economic strength, but also the financial security of the family. His career saw many deserving girl students being denied technical education, and this encouraged him to establish an engineering college exclusively for girls. It was a penance that went on for 13 years. The aches and pains and sacrifices that demanded of him is unimaginable. In 2003, GSSS Institute of Engineering and Technology for Women, the first college of engineering exclusively for girls, was established with the hard work and support of many seen and unseen hands. And the first batch of 185 girls was inducted into GSSS ITW Mysuro. The success formula... The success formula of pairing fully-fledged infrastructure and best teachers clicked so well that the college grew strength by strength in its admissions. The main academic block, including this auditorium where we are now seated, was built and executed just like how Professor Pandit had envisioned it. This massive and imposing structure was put together in a 24 bar 7 effort in just 19 months. And since then, students have been enjoying this clean and green campus. Starting with four branches, added with two more branches in 2006, GSSS ITW now has six undergraduation programs, three postgraduation programs, along with offering PhD in nine major emerging areas. The Rukmini Bai 
The Rukmini Amma Girls Hostel was added in 2008, a home away from home. It offers a safe, secure, and hygienic stay for its inmates. A pure vegetarian hostel mess serves nutritious food and snacks. The menu, which is carefully curated by a certified dietitian, keeping in mind the nutritional needs of young women, takes care of the well-being of its inmates. More hostel blocks were added as the demand grew, and now we have six blocks of modern hostels. A modern gym with certified trainers and yoga and meditation classes are also offered to the hostelites. With every batch that is inducted into this prestigious institute, we feel proud and satisfied that we all, as a team, are fulfilling the dream of our founder, Professor Pandit. It is with this thought and commitment that each day begins and ends at GSSS IITW. I feel very proud to say that as on date, this campus hosts 2,250 girl students, 800 girls in the hostels, and about 800 girls are ferried in college buses by the transport department from all parts of Mysore city. GSSS IITW is today bagging ranks in VTU, prizes in intercollegiate technical events and intercollegiate cultural events and is now getting stronger in the sports scenario as well. The GSSS School of Architecture was, uh, for Women was established in 2020 and is the most recent addition to the institutions managed by Geeta Shishu Shikshana Sangha. It is the first School of Architecture exclusively for women in Karnataka which has the approval of the Council of Architecture, New Delhi, and has the recognition by the Ministry of Higher Education, Government of Karnataka. GSSS School of Architecture for Women will move this month end into a grand structure that has been built and has an area of about 40,000 uh, square feet designed on the lines of the beautiful architecture of the Royal City of Palaces, Mysuru. So that's the building. Uh, that will be inaugurated by the month end. So our task of grooming the future women architects from our institute is entrusted in the safe hands of successful and reputed architects. My speech would not be complete if on this day I don't acknowledge the contributions of our founder president, Sri B.K. Kenche Gauda, sir, Mr. M. Anandrav of Ganesh Bidis, and the present managing committee members, and many, many well-wishers, teaching and non-teaching staff and workers, who have all selflessly served to the existence of this rare gem of Karnataka, the pride of Mysore city, which is Geeta Shishu Shikshana Sangha, we popularly know as GSSS. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for the brief information on the genesis of GSSS. Let's proceed further. In Discon 2023, has received more than 750 research articles, out of which only 172 papers have been selected after strict double peer review. A compilation of these selected research articles is in the form of conference proceedings. Now I humbly request all the dignitaries on the dais to do the honors of releasing the proceedings of the fourth edition flagship annual subsection international conference of the, the Genesis IEEE of India Council GSSS. in Discon 2023. Let's proceed further. In this country, 2023 has received more than 
Dr. Miguel Garcia Torres is an associate professor in the Escuela Politecnica Superior of the Universidad Pablo de Oliver. He received the BS degree in physics and the PhD degree in computer science from the Universidad de La Laguna, Tenerife, Spain in 2001 and 2007 respectively. After obtaining the doctorate, he held a postdoc position in the laboratory for space astrophysics and theoretical physics at the National Institute of Aerospace Technology, INTA. There, he joined the Gaia mission from the European Space Agency, ESA, and started to participate in the Gaia Data Processing and Analysis Consortium, BPAC, as a member of Astrophysical Parameters Coordination Unit, CU8. He has been involved in the Object Clustering Analysis, OCA Development Unit, for more than 10 years. He has been involved in several healthcare projects as main researcher. His research areas of interest include machine learning, bioinformatics, metaheuristics, big data, time series forecasting, and astrostatistics. He has co-authored more than 60 papers in international journals. That was an inspirational profile, sir. We are proud that you have graced our conference. May I now invite our chief guest, Dr. Miguel Garcia Torres, to address the gathering. Please, sir. Namaskara, Mysuru. It is with great pleasure to participate in the fourth flagship annual subsection international conference of the IEEE India Council, organized by IEEE Mysore subsection in association with IEEE Bangalore section and IEEE India Council, hosted by GSSS IETW Mysuru. It is indeed heartening to know that Galaxy of Eminent Scientists, Engineers, professionals and the students are participating in this conference. I hope this conference will act as a catalyst by providing useful and effective interaction of ideas. This should go a long way in transforming our lives for better. This conference focuses on a variety of emerging areas from theory to practice. The event is a unique opportunity for sharing advanced knowledge on many fundamental topics which serves as the core of increasing number of applications. Take a look around us. We find technology in every aspect and corner of our lives. Advancement from the electrical, electronic, communication, and computer engineering and technologies have fundamentally transformed our society. Many of today's problems require interdisciplinary approach towards the solution, and such congregation helps people network to establish collaboration. I would like to thank my friend, Dr. Parameshashari, for his kind invitation. I know him since a few years. We are working on various research projects and publish few papers. I'm also happy to congratulate the organizers of this conference. And I wish that this conference will provide a platform for inclusive participation in the field of engineering and technology. It would not be possible for me to name them all in this short message. I would nevertheless like to commend the effort of GSSEITW management and also the principal of GSSEITW. I extend my best wishes to all the delegates and members of organizing committee of this conference for grand success of this event. I applaud GSSEITW for taking initiation to organize this conference in association with IEEE. I appreciate Shared IEEE India Council, Dr. Das, for establishing the IEEE Indiscom Conference. I would like to appreciate all the volunteers of IEEE Mysore Subsection, IEEE Bangalore Section, and IEEE India Council for their excellent work. I will address future selection, trends, and challenges during my keynote address. See you after the inauguration. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experience with us. 
I now regret to say that due to a sudden commitment, Dr. Saiful Rahman, IEEE Life Fellow, Director, Virginia Tech Advanced Research Institute, USA, IEEE President-elect 2022, is not able to join us today. But let's not lose the opportunity to know about his accomplishments. Professor Saiful Rahman is the founding director of the Advanced Research Institute at Virginia Tech, USA, where he is the Joseph R. Loring Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering. He also directs the Center for Energy and the Global Environment. He's a Life Fellow of the IEEE and an IEEE Millennium Medal winner. He was the president of IEEE Power and Energy Society, PES, for 2018 and 2019. He was the founder editor-in-chief of the IEEE Electrification Magazine and the IEEE Transactions on Sustainable Energy. He has served as the chair of the U.S. National Science Foundation Advisory Committee for International Science and Engineering. He has published over 150 journal papers and has made over 600 conference and invited presentations. In 2006, he served on the IEEE Board of Directors as the Vice President for Publications. He is a distinguished lecturer for the IEEE Power and Energy Society and has lectured on renewable energy, energy efficiency, smart grid, energy internet, blockchain, IoT, etc. Sir has sent his best wishes for the success of this event through a message. We thank you, sir. Next, we have a distinguished guest of honor in Dr. Debabrita Das, 2023 Chair, IEEE India Council, Director, IIIT Bangalore. Dr. Debabrita Das is serving as Director of IIIT Bangalore, IIIT B. Before joining IIIT B in 2002, he had served at GS Sanyal School of Telecommunication at IIT Karakpur and later at Kirana Networks in New Jersey, USA. He is Project Officer of National Mission for Interdisciplinary Cyber Physical Systems in the areas of Advanced Communication System from DST Government of India. He was principal investigator of multiple sponsored projects from Intel, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, Motorola Research, Tejas Networks, Nokia, Government of India, in the areas of broadband, wireless Mac, QoS, energy saving, IMS. His main areas of research interest are IoT and wireless access networks, Mac, QoS, power saving. Dr. Das received his PhD degree from the Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur. He has more than 200 peer-reviewed papers in different transactions, journals, and international conferences. Dr. Das has received seven Best Paper Awards. He has five US or Indian patents and 10 more are under review. He and his wireless network team had contributed ideas to IEEE wireless broadband standard. He has received Professor K. Srinivasan Memorial Award in 2017 for excellent teaching and Professor SVC IAM Memorial Award in 2022 for research guidance in the areas of telecommunication and electronics from IETE. Dr. Das is recipient of IEEE Region 10 Outstanding Volunteer Award 2020, Global IEEE MGA Achievement Award 2012, an Outstanding Volunteer Award, IEEE Bangalore Section 2008. He is Fellow IET, Fellow IE, and SM IEEE. He is Chair of IEEE India Council from 2023. He was Chairman of IEEE Bangalore Section from 2017. Dr. Das is in Steering, Empire and Technical Committees of multiple departments, departments of Government of India and Government of Karnataka. Lots of milestones, sir. I take this opportunity to invite Dr. Deva Pratad Das, Director, Triple IT Bangalore, to speak a few words to the August gathering. Thank you. For Oman, uh, all the managements and and also the stu faculty, students, and all. First of all, my sincere thanks and regards to Srimati Banaja Pandit, uh, Madam uh, Namaskara, and she is a great and affectionate personality. I visited her today, and I can uh, see that how deeply she thanks. Uh, thank you for gracing the occasion. 
and my regards to Shrimati Anupama Bipandit, who is a dynamic and in the discussions and all, he always thinks ahead for this institute and particularly for the students' uh, benefits and how they will grow in their career. Thank you, madam, for coming and guessing. Thanks to my my long time friend and also the working together for the IEEE and also some of these R&D front together, Dr. Alok Nath Day, a chair of the IEEE Bangalore section and also the general chair of Indiscon 2023 under his dynamic leadership and also Mr. Puneet Mishra from the India Council, vice chair for the for the professional activities. This conference is possible in uh, to bring into this campus and then to Mysore. Thank you, Dr. Day and Puneet. I also want to thank uh, the uh, Dr. Kalyan uh, Velu, who is here as a speaker, and also Dr. Migul from uh, from the Pablo Olvo University from the Spain, and also the uh, Dr. Jagannathan Sinoy, and and all here he's there, and so I also want to one, tell all of you the students. The main source of energy and driving all of us to hear Dr. Paramesachari Bidhi. <laughs> and so he has been contacting and all Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkani and all the Exicom members of the Mysore subsection and Bangalore section. And my special thanks to my colleagues from IEEE India Councils who have come from and also the various sections. From, who has come from the various parts of the country. I'll be taking some of the names. Professor Prerna Gaur, she is here. And you, this is a woman uh, of uh, engineering college. You will feel proud. She is going to be the first woman chair of the IEEE India Council. And, and this is a big history as the, as the country is concerned. Thank you, madam, for coming from Delhi. And Professor Ansari, IEEE Delhi section chair, so he is here, so he has been, and Professor Kasim from the IEEE Kerala section chair, Professor, uh, Professor John George from IIT Guwahati, who looks up the industry academia collaboration. And I request uh, uh, Madam uh, Anupama to talk to him because a lot of collaboration with the industry and all. See, he leads in the, um, from IEEE. Mr. Bindu Madhav, and from um, a previous chair of the in Bangalore section who helped a lot to Mysore section shaping, Mr. Varghese from LMAG and Dr. Chandra Kanta, the who, and all the faculty members of all these GSSS Institute of uh, Technology and Omen, and, and also the students. You people are the real source of the energy to bringing in this. Thank you all. So now I am coming to the students. Now my main part of the telling you that you must have seen the theme of the conference, computational intelligence and learning systems. It is extremely important to the time, a title. But it has a deep meaning with respect to your career. You are all in the, in the after your plus two, you have joined this engineering, you will be in the at least 17, 18 or 19, maybe around that. So think about next 40, 50 years, you have to work and save the world. But look at the present scenario. You must be hearing artificial intelligence and machine learning, deep learning, all those things impact towards the job and your career. So this conference, this computational intelligence and learning system is a part of the larger umbrella of artificial intelligence to kind of things. Then this topic and your institute has a lot of strong relationship regarding which I am going to tell you from my long experiences of teaching and research in the areas of different communications. As you know, this, this AI and the, and the computational intelligence will change a lot of routine works to automation. What does it mean? Let me give you an example. You students, if you call to any of these telecom operators, if you have a phone SIM, I'm giving the simplest example because you have the mobile phone everybody has. If you have Airtel, 
B for A for Airtel, B for BSNL, C for or Geo, something like that, go. All these <laughs> kind of telecom providers, when you dial their numbers for your, your help, help desk, so you then the voice come from that side, please press one for Canada, plus two for English, three for Hindi and all. Then you press one, then it goes to Canada, then you and second, uh, then you ask the prepaid how much balance I have. Press one or two, three. You will never, never find a person nowadays 95% of the time. But 10 years back, when I used to call to this help desk, there used to be a person there and asking me question and giving answer to me. So within this 5 to 10 years, what change has happened? The automation means routine questions, 95% of them is answered by the machines. So what is kept for us then? As a human, there are 10 people were there, 10 questions. Now only one person is there, nine are automated. So similarly, in this job scenario in the future, due to this AI, ML, all kind of things, automations and machine intelligence, Many routine jobs, which is done by human being now, may be done by the machine. Not maybe, it will be. So in the what next? What should I do now as a student? So as a professor also, we think about our students day and night. So we design our curriculum in that direction. But as a student, you should think of that. So that means the things which are not routine. That means the problem which is not being solved and if which can be solved by by you all as with a new ideas and a new things those things are cannot may not be may not be able to be solved so easily by this ai ml that that means you need research you need innovations to going forward so why i am speaking all these things such here and because you are a student first of all second is very very important please listen this part because this is a omen institute of technology and I have observed in my labs, not only my labs, multiple labs, you B-Tech, M-Tech, maybe there was a boys and girls, and little numbers more on the boys, maybe less on the girls. But as the research going forward, we have invariably more number of girls than the boys in the PhDs by their merit, by their intelligence. And the most important thing which women carries is that lot of patience, observing the failures, which, which generally by inherent character of the woman, uh, by, by the society, at the home, and a lot of challenges they face, and the team spirit. The woman has a lot of team spirit because you must have seen your grandmother or mother taking the family together. So in, in inherently, these are the qualities which helps them to build up their research careers, which is the need of the now and the future which is AI ML is driving towards. That means we need more research. So you have the, all the ingredients as a personality, but in the academics front, you have to have to drive yourself how to do research. That is the only requirement. Other part, you are very good. Uh, because I have seen in my lab to last many years, 15 years to 20 years, more than that, the, all the major, major good works, they, they have been, women are always equal to, uh, man and also sometimes their patience levels are much much higher than the man which is requirement of the research because in research we see failures now and then because you have thought this idea will work sometimes it doesn't work or sometimes it works so these kind of things helps us so with this note i want to invite all of you to think over that what should I do in my career in long run and how to go for my higher studies. And nowadays, most of the higher studies has fellowships. And as, as my previous speaker was talking about, there are so many scholarships and all. And you can hear from the IEEE also, there are so many scholarships or the support system for the conferences are there. So all those things and the universities are also supporting. And today, Anupama Madam also talking about to me that uh, whether we can go for the status for the woman. And I will, I'm very happy to tell you that there is, there is special supports and also the financial supports and the mentoring support from the governments of the different state and the center for the woman itself. So not only you do the research and the innovation, but also if you want to start your company, a lot of, lot of extra supports are there. So in this note, with your permissions, and with the thanks to the chair and the organizing committee, I stop at here and over to the and wishing this conference a grant and success from Italy India Council. Thank you.
All of us are truly inspired by your words and deeds. Thank you, sir. Research is seeing what everybody else has seen and thinking what nobody else has thought. And one such researcher is today's next guest of honor, Dr. Kalyana C. Veluvolu, College of IT Engineering, Kyungpuk National University, South Korea. Dr. Kalyan C. Veluvolu is a professor at the College of IT Engineering, Kyungpuk Na National University, South Korea. He is currently the head of the Intelligent Systems and Control Division of School of Electronics Engineering. He is also the director of the research lab, where he heads an interdisciplinary research group whose interests lie at the intersection of intelligence, robotics, sensing systems, and healthcare. Since 2009, he has been with the College of IT Engineering, Kyungpuk National University, Diago, South Korea. He received the B.Tech degree in Electrical and Electronics Engineering from Nagarjuna University, India in 2002 and Ph.D. in Electrical Engineering from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore in 2006. From 2006 to 2009, he was a research fellow with the Robotics Research Center, Nanyang Technological University. He was attached to the School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, Nan Nanyang Technological University, as a visiting professor during 16 to 2016 to 17. He has also held several visiting positions in University of Newcastle, UK, and University of Valenciennes, France. He has been a principal investigator or a co-investigator on a number of research projects funded by government, industry, and universities with a total budget of over 8 million US dollars. He also received several awards for research excellence, including the prestigious KNU Academy Lifetime Award in 2022, an excellent research award awarded by Ministry of Education South Korea in 2018. Further, he was also awarded with Best Teaching Award in 2021. He has authored or co-authored more than 130 journal articles and conference proceedings. He is currently the Associate Editor for Journal of the Franklin Institute, System Science and Control Engineering Journals, Electronics, Complex Engineering Systems, etc. He has been on technical or program committees of several international conferences. Dr. Veluvolu is also a senior member of IEEE. Inspiring profile, sir. We are honored by your presence. I invite you to kindly address the audience. Namaskara, Mysore. Given a long list of uh, addresses, I would like to keep this one short. Uh, esteemed guests, distinguished dignitaries, and all the students here, I stand before with immense gratitude and honor at the prestigious IndusCon 2023 conference. I extend my heartfelt appreciation to the General Chair, Dr. Parmesh Chari, for his commitment and leadership in organizing this remarkable event. Today, we gather here to celebrate knowledge, innovation, and the power of collective intellect in shaping our future. This conference serves as a platform to exchange ideas, collaborate, and foster progress in diverse field. I would like to extend special thanks to the Gita Shishu Sikshana Sangha for unwavering support. It's a privilege and honor to address such an esteemed gathering and share insights on the latest advancements in our respective domains. Thank you all for your presence and enthusiastic participation in this conference. I wish this event a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We also have Dr. Alok Nath De, General Chair, Indiscon 2023, Chair, IEEE Bangalore Section, as a guest of honor for today's inaugural program. Dr. Alok Nath De holds a B.Tech from IIT Karakpur, M.E. from IIC Bangalore, and a Ph.D. from McGill University, Montreal. He has served as visiting professor with IIT Roorkee and IIT Delhi from 2005 to 2011. Dr. Alok has 30 years of industry and business experience that includes Bell, Nortel, ST Ericsson as country director and also has been the corporate vice president of Samsung Electronics. Dr. Alok has been the chief technology officer of Samsung India for over a decade and is a visiting professor in IISC Bangalore and IIT Jodhpur. Dr. Day has enormous achievements where he is a recipient of Alexander Graham Bell Prize in Canada. IET Memorial Awards 
for his distinguished contributions in electronics and communication and many other awards that includes IDC Insights Award, Gino Award, Asocham Award, and many more for his wide contributions in various fields. He is also the senior member of IEEE and chair 2023 of the Bangalore section. Dr. Day is a fellow of IEI, IETE, and INAE. Dr. Day has recently co-edited a book on 6G mobile wireless networks with Springer. His R&D and business interest is in cyber physical systems with underlying in technologies of augmented intelligence and secure IoT. With his leadership, Samsung India has touched 7,500 plus patents cumulatively by 2021. He has 50 plus patents under file. We are pleased to have you amongst us today, sir. I request you to say a few words to the gathering. So good afternoon. <laughs> Srimati Pandit and Dr. Chennai, I mean, thanks for hosting. Thanks for bringing all of us together. Give them a big round of applause for the GSSS. And all the dignitaries on dais, off dais, students, faculties, researchers, all my fellow IEEE colleagues who all have read the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Anybody? OK. So I recommend you, by Stephen Covey, you read sometime. But one of the habit is keep the end in mind. Keep the end in mind, and I can tell you it works. Because 15 of, uh, like 15 months back, five of us sat together and said in Mysuru, in July, August 2023, you know, 400, 500 people, and we will be having this in this con, let's write a proposal for that. And that's what we did, and today is that day. So keep the end in mind and work backwards and take it forward. So with that, you know, the next step that came is what is the topic? And I'm very particular that choose a topic, make it like a workshop. Many of the people want to keep it open, but we struck a balance and said, let's do computational intelligence and learning systems. And Professor Das had very nicely highlighted the importance of AI, ML, and how the society and the technology is changing. So I'll not detail out more on that. Following this, Obviously, Dr. Sudarshan, who is the chair for this year, and then he has been taking forward with the Execom, and we are also uh, having a great presence of India Council, as well as Bangalore section Execom. So it is a confluence of India Council, Bangalore section, Mysuru subsection, and all the researchers. Again, I would request one more round of applause for all of the people. So, uh, you know, as we grow and we do things, we would also love to uh, build things further, right from where it is. We had these physical events, but somehow the COVID time, we all went online and we have come back. And this is a hybrid event. However, I would love more and more people to join physically. There should be a right balance between physical and online. I see a lot of papers are getting presented online. Recently, we did an IEEE Connect where 97 papers, only seven were online. So I think it's very, very important for organizers to also work and bring people physically so that the networking can also happen. We are happy to see Mysuru is growing. And in IEEE, there is NIE, there is Maharaja Institute of Technology, who has taken a lot of memberships growth. But there is room for further leaderships, involvement, industry people coming in Execom, the student branch growth, the society chapters that we have, 30 societies in Bangalore itself, some of them need to grow also here. So I'm hoping that Mysuru subsection will grow further and further over time. We did this year, MysuruCon will happen in December, but this in this con, but also BHTC, Humanitarian Technology Conference of the section that we have decided to rotate among four, three subsections as well as section. Uh, this year was in my store in, uh, you know, JSS, and we had in the hospital so that 
good health and well-being. That was the topic. And how do you bring engineers as well as uh, you know medical community together? That was our focus. So that way, I think we are doing beyond Bangalore, bringing things to Mysore. And I'm hoping that the local leaderships can take this forward over time. This is a research forum, forging relationships. Please use your time for networking, not just attend inaugurations, but there are research papers. Please choose your uh, right track and participate in them. We have from IEEE international collaborations, project funding, you see uh, people coming from other countries, please talk to them and make sure that there are some level of collaborations that we can take it forward. And GSSS, yes, uh, I got a chance last year. There was a faculty development program in which I joined, which was for signal processing for hearing challenged. And such topics, uh, and as we were hearing, uh, Professor Pandit was mentioning that, uh, you know, in our discussion, how this institute has grown. I mean, obviously, the first thing is for the women, is there a safe place to study? Is there a, a nice way to progress and get empowered? But over time, people get employment. But this is a time, this decade, we can think of some of us, some of you would be able to venture it into the startups and entrepreneurship. And we have, as Dr. Das said, we have certain package, certain funding from government, but also from us, we would be able to support with IEEE and otherwise. IEEE has a women in engineering as a society affinity group, and we would make sure that there are more collaborations between IEEE V and GSSS so that you can take more benefits. And yes, the leadership is growing. Professor Prerna Grad is one example. Uh, Dr. Deepa Shenai, after 45 years, even for section, was the first chair. And I'm hoping more and more, I told as a challenge, before Bangalore section reaches 50th year in 2027, at least one, maybe two, will have even in section as chair. So we are working hard. Please join in any way that you can and grow your career. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for the encouraging words. We have an eminent guest of honor who has joined us virtually. Mr. Punit Kumar Mishra, ISRO, Bengaluru, Vice Chair, Professional Activities, IEEE India Council. Mr. Punit Kumar Mishra earned his MTech RF and Microwave from IIT Roorkee in the year 2004. Since 2004, he is with UR Rao Satellite Center, Bengaluru. He has rich experience in RF characterization of 47 satellites, 325 antennas, and radoms. He has indigenously developed C band, Ku band, and Ka band compact range feeds to meet various requirements of ISRO's satellite program. He has played a pivotal role in establishing a satellite level EMC facility and Asia's largest magnetic field measurement facility. He is also responsible for conceiving, conceptualizing, and establishing world's first compact range with a 10-meter quiet zone. Presently, he is heading satellite antenna characterization, test and design section of UR Rao Satellite Center, ISRO, India. He has received IET, IRSI, Young Scientist Awards in the year 2012, ISRO Young Scientist Award in the year 2013, ASI, ISRO Space Gold Medal in the year 2014, GE Foundation Award for Academic Excellence and Leadership in 2002 to 2004, IEEE MGA Achievement Award in 2017, and six Best Paper Awards. He has developed a payload to study the RF blackout phenomenon during re-entry of space vehicle. He has successfully developed indigenous bus bars for high power satellites, which are used in multiple spacecraft. He has published more than 50 technical papers in international conferences and IEEE transactions. He's a senior member of IEEE, a fellow of IET and IEI, and a life member of ASI. He is a passionate volunteer and served Bangalore section in various capacities, including Chair 2020 and India Council as, uh, in 2017 and 2018, uh, 2019 to 2020 Secretary, and 21 to 20, 22 Vice Chair, 
Presently, he is serving as BOG IEEE AESS and member of global committees of IEEE Industry Engagement, IEEE APS, and IEEE Technical Program Integrity Committee. Thank you, sir, for virtually being present on this occasion. I invite you to speak a few words to the participants of this conference. Please, sir. Uh, 2019 to 2020 secretary and 21 to 2022 20, vice chair. Secretary is serving as POG IEEE AESS and member of global committees of IEEE industry engagement, IEEE APS, and IEEE technical program integrity committee. Thank you, sir, for virtually being present on this occasion. I invite you to speak a few words to the participants of this conference. Hey, good morning to all of you. Hope I am audible. Uh, Hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay, so I cannot see the dias, so that's why I'm worried whether I'm connected or not. Anyway, thank you very much for inviting me. And I'm really happy to see the Mysore subsection uh, going uh, leaps and bounds, and uh, which we initiated in 2020 under the leadership of uh, Dr. Bindu Thomas. So thank you very much. And uh, this particular conference is IEEE India Council subsections conference, namely Indiscon, which was again conceptualized uh, in 2020 when I was uh, India Council secretary just to provide opportunities to the subsections to organize an international conference in their own respective subsections and bring all the who's who of IEEE India Council as well as the international uh, experts to the subsection so that subsections are getting benefited, subsections members are getting benefited with networking opportunities, paper presentation opportunities, and then collaborating with the external and Indian collaborators and researchers. So I'm really happy to see that the level of Indiscon is increasing exponentially. And this year we have received 850 plus papers, which shows the, uh, what you can say, success of Indiscon 2023. Out of this 850 plus papers, uh, only 173 papers are being selected, which also shows the quality of this conference. And uh, I'm really proud to say that uh, the quality is uh, extensively maintained here under the leadership of uh, India Council Chair, Professor Devbrata Das and Bangalore Section Chair, uh, Dr. Alok Nadde, who always talks about quality in IEEE conferences. Uh, in addition to that, what I would like to say here is, I have been personally in GSSS IET, uh, Mysuru in one occasion, and I have seen the contributions given by Srimati Vanja Pandit, as well as Principal Dr. Shiv Kumar, who has been driving this initiative of uh, an exclusive college for women in engineering, which is very, very rare. I think across India, we are having only two or three colleges. And GSSS IET W is one of such colleges which is uh, taking a flag uh, high in promoting women education, especially in the engineering discipline. So I'm really happy to be part of this and virtually presence in this inaugural ceremony of Indiscon 2024. And I would also like to thank Bangalore section, my Sur subsection for organizing this so wonderfully, this conference that uh, we can see the dignitaries from most of the Indian sections. They are present here. I can see a lot of uh, section chairs are there uh, and section representatives are there, including the Bangalore uh, section vice chair, Dr. Chandrakanta. I can see him. He is sitting also in the uh, audience. So it is truly inspiring and encouraging for these young women students that, yes, uh, being part of IEEE 
they can collaborate with international experts they can meet the who's who of engineering and technology and on this occasion i would also like to say that uh, coincidentally today's date is also very very important uh, from being from uh, space community today you may be knowing that uh, our chandrayaan 3 is going to be captured in the uh, uh, lunar orbit so today loi is happening at 7 pm india time and uh, on same day we are organizing in this con so it is also coincidentally a very very uh, motivational day for engineering and technology community of india with this once again thank you very much uh, dr parmesha chari for again taking the lead and uh, showing that yes whatever confidence we are having on you you really go to extra mile and create an impact to ieee activities thank you very much for all your volunteering and uh, again last but not the least i would like to congratulate dr kulkarni under whose uh, leadership this year in mysore subsection we have organized two wonderful ex- uh, conferences one is what dr day told i triple bstc and second one it is going to happen i triple in discon uh, and both the conferences are truly successful and at this point of time also would like to wish that i triple chandigarh sub sections that the next in this con is going to happen in i triple chandigarh sub section i think uh, they are physically present here and they are seeing that Uh, the amount of hard work put by IEEE Mysore subsection volunteers in organizing the logistics as well as taking care of technical program so beautifully so hopefully when we will meet in chandigarh next year we are going to have a higher level of indiscon in all aspects thank you very much thank you sir for the motivational words moving further i am glad to humbly introduce a very noble graceful personality who doesn't require any formal introduction as you all must have heard about her deeds and endless contribution towards the society shrimati vanaja vi pandit madam is a founder member of geeta shishu shikshana sangha and wife of late professor b s pandit sir she served this organization as member and vice president in the past and took charge as honorary secretary after late professor b s pandit sir she is a philanthropist and a social worker she is also serving as member and board of directors in many charitable organization in mysore now i request the noble women of this institution whom everyone looks forward to shrimati vanaja vi pandit madam honorary secretary g plus r chief patron in this con 2023 to deliver the presidential address thank you thank you shamla good evening everybody good evening. yes with due respect to the dignitaries on the dais of the dais all the staff and students of our institution oh morning i was a namaste hel bidtini ma sari hogutte namaste to everyone <laughs> i am happy to welcome you all to the fourth international conference indiscon 2023 hosted by g plus ietw G Triple S I E T W has always supported such events for the betterment of students and the society. I thank the chief guest and other guests on the dais of our con- from our country and outside our country for having accepted our invitation to grace this event. And I also uh, thank the dignitaries uh, online who have come and. Uh, given good uh, suggestions and very in a lot of suggestions and good words about the institution and the i a e i triple e na i triple e organization and we hope to continue our association with this organization for the betterment of our students and we 
and I appreciate and thank Dr. Parmesha Chari and the Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni for the support and cooperation. I appreciate and uh, congratulate Dr. Shukumar and his team for executing this event successfully. I wish them all, all the best for the success of this program. I pray God to bless you all with good health and long life and all prosperity. I'm sure you will be benefited by this program as you are having it for two more days online. Thank you, children and everybody. Wish you all all the best. God bless you all. Thank you, ma'am. Your words always work as catalyst to all of us here. We are very fortunate to have your blessings and support, ma'am. Now, let's proceed to the felicitation ceremony to appreciate the gracious presence and initiatives of the guests and dignitaries towards smooth conduction of the fourth edition flagship annual subsection international conference of the IEEE India Council, Indiscon 2023. I request Dr. Devabrita Das, 2023 Chair, ICP India Council, and Sri Panitabhi Pandit, Honorary Secretary, Plus R, Kandy Felicity, our Chief Guest, Dr. Vikram Das, Chair, Forest, Chair of the College of University of Spain, as a token of appreciation. I request all the other dignitaries to join. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next, I invite Dr. Aloknath Dev, Chair, IEEE Bangalore Section, to present the Certificate of Appreciation to Mr. Jairam, Chief Architect, Boeing India Private Limited, the industry sponsors of this international conference. I request Mr. Jairam to please come over to the dais. Oh, he's Thank you, sirs. Now I request Dr. Debabrita Das, 2023 Chair, IEEE India Council, to distribute the appreciation certificates. First, the appreciation certificate of host institution to the princ principal of this prestigious institution, Dr. M. Shivakumar. Dr. Debabrita, sir, sir. Next, Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Deepak H.A., Associate Professor, Naukis College of Engineering, IEEE Exicom member, Mysore subsection. Please come out to the dais. Request Dr. Devabrita Das to, sir, to give away the appreciation certificate to Dr. Deepak H.A. Okay. Next, the certificates of organizing chairs. To receive the certificate, I call upon Dr. Rajendra R. Patil, organizing chair in Discount 2023, professor and head, ECE Department, GTPLUS, IETW, to come over the dais. Next, I call upon Dr. Sriramulu Mahesh, organizing chair in Discount 2023, professor and head, IEEE Department, GTPLUS, IETW, to come over. Now I invite Dr. Raghavendra Deshpande, G plus I triple student branch counselor, associate professor, triple E department, G plus IETW to come over. Next, the, it's time to appreciate the TPC chairs and track chairs of Indiscon 2023. Okay. I call upon Dr. Padma Shri as Professor, ECE Department, 
to come over. Dr. Manjula Ji, Associate Professor, EC Department. Dr. Sushma S.J., Associate Professor, EC Department. Dr. Shyamala, Associate Professor, Electronics and Communication Department. Dr. Raghavendra Vayam, Associate Professor, EC Department, GSSS IETW. Dr. Lata M, Associate Professor, EC Department, GSSS IETW. Dr. Jagdish N, Associate Professor, Triple E Department, GSSS IETW. Mr. Kirti Kumar, Assistant Professor, EC Department, GSSS IETW. Now, members from IEEE Mysore subsection. Mr. Rakesh K. R. Mr. Rakesh K. R. from IEEE Mysore subsection. Mr. Deepak R. Mr. Eshwant L. M. Dr. Shivashankar S. Dr. Ravichandra Kulkarni, Dr. Chengappa, MR, Dr. Shashidara, HR. Dr. Raghavendra Vayam, Associate Professor, EC Department, GSSS IETW. Thank you all. Moving ahead, now I invite Dr. Devabrata Das, 2023 Chair, IEEE India Council, to announce the name of IEEE subsection that will host Indiscan, Indiscan 2024. And Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni, Conference Chair, Indiscan 2023, Chair, IEEE Mysore subsection, to do the handover. Just to announce this line. So, good afternoon all. So, this is an announcement that uh, Indiscon 2024 to Professor Arun Kumar Singh, Chair Chandigarh Subsection, and Professor in Punjab Engineering College Chandigarh. Uh, it, it will be handed over to him after this uh, today, uh, but uh, it will be after the conference. Yes. So, he'll be starting his this conference 2023. He'll be starting working on that. Congratulations and Thank you, thanks for coming. Thank you. Come, we have a group photo. You also come.
Thank you all. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. Now it's time to express our sincere gratitude to all those who have been a part of this international conference. Let me first introduce the highly professional and dynamic principal, Dr. M. Shiv Kumar. He has rich experience in teaching and research. He's a recognized PhD guide and a VTU. Five of his research scholars are conferred with PhD. He has served as BOE, BOS, member for VTU and Kuwempu University. He has published good number of research papers. He has presented papers in national and international conferences. He has executed many funded projects. He is also a member of various academic committees and professional bodies in many universities and organizations. Now I request Dr. Shivakumar M, Principal, GSSS IETW, to deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to one and all. Dignitaries on and off the dais. I, Dr. Yam Shukumar, Principal of GSSS Institute of Engineering and Technology for Women, feel privileged to propose the vote of thanks on this occasion. Before proceedings further, I would like to pay my gratitude to late Professor B.S. Pandi, sir, who has built this great institution with the vision of women empowerment. First and foremost, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the chief guests of inaugural function, Dr. Miguel Garcia Torres, Pablo de Olavide University, and Dr. Saifur Rahman, IEEE President and Director, Virginia Technological Research Institute, USA, for gracing the occasion and sharing their ideas with us. I thank both of them. I sincerely thank guests of honor of inaugural function, Dr. Deva Brata Das, Chair IEEE India Council, Dr. Kalyana C. Veluvolu, College of IT Engineering, Kyangpok National University, South Korea, Dr. Alok Nath Day, General Chair, Indiscon 2023, Dr. Puneet K. Mishra, Vice Chair, Technical Activities, IEEE India Council for gracing the occasion and delivering the enlightening speeches. I thank all of them. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Parmesha Chari BD, General Chair, Indiscon 2023, and SAC Chair, IEEE Bangalore Section. Thank you, sir. I sincerely thank Dr. Sudarshan Patil Kulkarni, Conference Chair, Indiscon 2023, and Chair, IEEE Mysore Section. Thank you, sir. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all the office bearers of IEEE India Council, IEEE Bangalore section and IEEE Mysore subsection, I thank each one of them. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to our Honorary Secretary, Srimati Vanjabi Pandit Madam, for her wholehearted support and blessings. Thank you, Madam. I take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to Sri O. Pratap Kumar, sir, Joint Secretary, Jitripala, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to Sri BK Nataraj, sir, board member G. Tribalasar. Thank you, sir. I sincerely thank our administrative officer, Srimati Anupama B. Pandit, madam, for valuable suggestions and encouragement in organizing this uh, conference. Thank you, madam. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to Boeing, the sponsors of Indiscon 2023. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the conference session chairs. I thank each one of them. I sincerely thank organizing chairs of the conference, Dr. Rajendra R. Patil, Professor and Head, Department of EC, Dr. Sri Ramuluji Mahesh, Professor and Head, Department of Tripoli, and IEEE Branch Counselor, Dr. Raghavendra Deshpande, Associate Professor in Tripoli Department and members of various committees of this conference. I would like, I would like to thank HODs of various departments, staff members of EC and Tripoli Departments for their cooperation. I would also like to express my sincere thanks to all authors who have joined us from various corners of the world. 
your active engagement enthusiasm and eagerness to learn were essential in making this conference a vibrant and intellectually stimulating event i'm thankful to all the faculty members and non teaching staff members for the in immense support in organizing this conference i'm thankful to all our distinguished guests invitees present media persons for being with us once again thank you everyone who have played a part in making this conference a phenomenal success thank you one and all thank you sir it's time now to capture these memories first i invite all the authors and participants of indiscon 2023 to come over the dais for a group photo all the participants are requested to come over authors Next. Next, I request the IEEE India Council members to come over the dais. Please come over. next i request the excom members of i triple bangalore section and mysore sub section to please <laughs> excom members of i triple bangalore section and mysore sub section to come over next thank you very good friend of bajaj ha it's a bajaj please sorry lord no the student volunteers are also requested to come over mysore sub section student volunteers please come over come please come student volunteers please come sir me the video correct next i invite the organizing chairs of indiscon 2023 and iiee student branch counselor to come over for the next photo student members uh, yeah. yeah student volunteers of gss also please come over <laughs> student volunteers of at least yeah you please stand develop yes. g triple s student volunteers who were there in the sessions registration committee stage committee uh, in yara read come uh, board writing team 
Be fast, girls. Maintain silence. The organizing chairs of Indiscon 2023 and IEEE Student Branch Councillor to come over. Next, I request the uh, Indiscon 2023 organizing committee members from EC department to be ready. Indiscon com organizing committee members, EC department staff, please come over. Oh. No, no, no. Please be fast. Triple E department also, the staff of Triple E department also, please come over. Come, come. Akhne the money. Come. Huh? Girls, remain seated. The college bus is leaving at 5:45. All are requested to. The college bus is leaving at 5.45. So please remain seated. Shh. Remain seated, girls. Yes? Girls, all are informed to remain seated. Maintain silence and be seated there. You have an interesting panel discussion after this, so please be seated. Thank you all. The biggest wall you have to climb is the one you built in your mind. Never let your mind talk you out of your dreams. Trick you into giving up. Never let your mind become the greatest obstacle to success. Get your mind on the right track. The rest will follow. With this, Triple A department, please come over. Staff of Triple A department, please come over the dais.
All the staff of Tripoli Department. Thank you all. With this, we conclude the inaugural function and move towards the keynote address. Hence, request the dignitaries to occupy the seats in the front row. Thank you all. Now we have the keynote address by our guest of honor, Dr. Kalyana C. Veluvolu, College of IT Engineering, Kyungpook National University, South Korea. Sir will speak on the topic reinforcement learning and shared control for autonomous vehicles. The student, the students, sir, on muddy, on muddy, sir, on muddy. The students, sir. on mud. Students, please be seated. Please remain seated. This keynote address is arranged for you. Gain knowledge. Students. I repeat, the bus, college bus is departing at 5.45. You have ample time. Please remain seated. Here to the keynote address, gain knowledge. The girls in the last row are informed to be seated. You'll thank you. Now, Dr. Kalyana C. Veluvolu, sir, will continue with the keynote address. He's speaking on the topic, reinforcement learning and shared control for autonomous vehicles. Thank you. Please. You need a caller mic or something? Uh, the presentation will be here, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think it should be fine. Caller mic, sir? If you have, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, your bag, your bag is in the car. No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. no more bag is there. Ah, okay, okay.
Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for keeping you waiting here. <laughs> I don't want to take much of your time. I will keep the bro uh, talk brief. Okay, I will only show something interesting and basic. So coming to here, this is the first keynote talk. I am Kalyana Veluolu with the School of Electronics Engineering, King Puk National University. So I'm a professor with the uh, King Cook National University. I've been in Korea for almost 14 years. Okay, this is uh, South Korea. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the Korea. I think a lot of people are familiar because of Netflix, Korean dramas, and K-pop. Am I right? What is your favorite Korean drama? <laughs> okay, so I come from uh, uh, southern part of Korea. Okay, I think I'm showing the whole Korean map and also the world map here. Okay, coming to my background, uh, I was born in India, but uh, you know, half my life until now I spent overseas. So after my graduation in India, I moved to Singapore where I did my PhD and also worked in Singapore. And later on, I happened to move to Korea. Until then, I, don't, I really don't know where Korea is in the world map. You know, until I moved to Korea. So that's my background. I actually can speak a few languages as well. Coming to here, I'm, today's talk is, is actually focusing on autonomous vehicles and shared control. So I just want to show the Korea global presence. The Korean market, if you see, is quite dominated by many companies. And the most important, if you see, overseas revenue. You see, a, Korea is a much export-oriented country. If you look here, I think uh, you'll, you'll see that uh, overseas re revenue forms a big chunk for LG, Samsung, and everything. And the domestic revenue, revenue is very small. You see that the most important for uh, growth and prosperity is the exports. <laughs> so coming to here, Korea automobile market is also very popular. I think everyone is here familiar with Kia, right? Kia cars and everywhere, I see a lot of Kia cars, Seltos, recent cars, also Hyundai has been in Indian market for a while as well. Coming to autonomous vehicle, you know, everyone is familiar about Tesla. I think uh, if you look at Tesla, everyone is looking at autonomous full road. I'm really interested to see when Tesla is in on the Indian road, you know, how, how it looks at the random traffic conditions. You know, I'm also very curious about how what Tesla is going to do, you know. Even uh, that's the one of the big challenges for any of the autonomous vehicles is it has a lot of uh, sensors, you know, a lot of sensors, network sensors. So if you look at a general, uh, any of this one, it has GPS, LIDAR, cameras, ultrasonic sensors, and all this one. So as a control system, if you are looking at all this sensor, we need to actually look into this information, process this information, and make real-time decision. You see, if a car of a, is moving at a speed of 100 kilometers per hour, you know, the decision making has to be done at a very high frequency. So there are a lot of uh, issues with autonomous vehicles. So coming to the companies in AV, in the, in the last five to 10 years, I think a lot of companies are going into EV market, even from Samsung, LG Electronics are actually going a lot into the market. And if you see a lot of companies, even from Apple to Google, they're all focusing on the, this market. So if you look at the patent applications in this technology, if you see there is an exponential increase in patents into the EV market as well. And coming to autonomous vehicles, there are several levels, you know. When we talk about automation, we have no automation and the level one driver assistance. So if you're looking at driver assistance, giving some information, blind spots, giving like a, when we want to change the lanes, it use some kind of assistance information. Third, we have partial automation. I think these days cars have 
Number three, the partial automation, parking themselves. I think Mercedes, even Hyundai, a lot of luxury cars have automated parking. You know, you can leave the car, it parks into the parking lot. So next is conditional automation, and we have high automation and full automation. I think we are somewhere in three and four, and uh, we are looking at full automation. I think still we need a lot of uh, progress in this field. Coming to this, this is uh, another slide that actually shows about ADAS control at various levels. Still, human, the point why I'm talking about autonomous cars is I want human to be the controller. You know, we control, so I don't want my life to be an autonomous car and which decides what happens next. So, the main aspect of this talk is about shared control. I'm going to describe about what exactly shared control in the later part. So if you look at a simplified AV model, you're going to have a lot of uh, information from the environment and also you have a behavior and motion planning all going together. So next, one of the major issue is about uh, personal and vehicular safety. What happens if two driverless cars collide? Who will, t who will be accountable? Actually, we don't have a lot of uh, solutions yet because when a driverless car hits a human or driverless car hits something, are you going to sue the company or are you going to sue the human? So still, you know, the laws are being framed. I think we don't have laws yet. So the other big problem is the trust. So lack of human trust is, uh, you know, it's, it's like a sinusoidal wave. When there is a technology is progressing, everyone starts believing. And when there is a few accidents, suddenly they lose their trust. And so this has been sinusoidal graph. You know, there is an increase in trust and also decrease in trust with the increase of accident. In the next five years or 10 years or so, we'll have a lot of autonomous vehicles. Not only this kind of maybe drones or kind of uh, ro robots as well. We can have a lot of mobile devices, you know, which are autonomous as well. So we're going to face a lot of issues when where human trust is very important. Now coming to vehicles, why human trust? I think if you don't trust, I don't think you will take the car. You will you'll drive the car. The most important is who is actually controlling the vehicle. You want your computer or you want the human to control the vehicle. So this is another, uh, some of the... Uh, accidents that has been recorded and a Uber self-driving car, which kills a pedestrian as well. So as the technology is in infancy, you know, we're going to have some kind of features and then sooner or later, we're going to progress much to a full level automation. So these are other uh, crashes, which I'm showing here that the technology, although is full autonomous, a lot of people are big fans for autonomous cars. But I think in future, we would like to have a human in the center of this control. So coming to the most important part of the talk, what is shared control? So what is shared control? Shared control means where human and machine cooperatively control together. I'm just giving simple diagrams of about uh, machine center control or uh, haptic shared control. You see, if you're looking at a Boeing or a aircraft, you know, Airbus, you have a controller, right? The pilot, right? How many of you think these days, pilots control everything. Machine controls almost 80 to 90% of the flight, you know. Pilots have very little control. They only do only in certain cases. These, the control systems in today's aircraft almost does everything. They are also planning for fully automated flight vehicles in future. But still, the, the acceptance of this technology is the major issue. Now, if you look at this one, even a pilot can override, yes, pilot can override most of the time. But however, pilot actually is very comfortable to actually allow the automation to take the control most of the time. So, so if you're looking at the method one here, machine-centered shared control, where you have machine operator and a human operator, and actually it's a kind of shared control. You see, this is like almost like Tesla. You leave it, the Tesla takes the full control, and only when necessary or when there is some kind of loss of sensor information or a complex scenario, machine asks to override or take the human to control. So it's a switch. You can't have shared control. Very important. You have either the machine controlling or the human controlling. It's not together. The second one is haptic control. Haptic controller is like a summation of both the controls. You know, you have a human operator and a machine operator holding the steering wheel. Machine also provides you some bit of a 
actuation and the human also provides some force as well. So together you can control, but it's very hard on what aspect and what how we come to decide the control. So what is the major issue is impossible for human machine, mutual learning and adaptation. You know, if I want, what do I want in the future? Most important is what will we want in future? In future, I would like to see that if I sit in my car, the car trusts me, okay? And I trust the car. But when I say the trust, it's a mutual learning, right? When, when you buy a car and you start driving, the, the car should be able to adapt to your personalized driving habits. Maybe your driving profile, how your mood, how you drive, it's going to learn. In the same way, vehicle also learns about you and also you learn about the vehicle. So over a period of time, vehicle and machines adapt to a certain level that you can understand how the vehicle is going to behave. So this is trust. So what we are trying to see is in order to enable this kind of shared control, you need to have a lot of feedback to the machine. Machine cannot understand just by looking at your driving. It also needs to understand a lot of aspects about human. So most important when human and machines together operate is conflict. Okay, you want to drive, you want to take the left lane? No, the automation wants to take a right lane. Conflicts arise. You know, human and machine cannot work together. There will be conflicts. So, so there actually, the point in this one, in any automation is just an optimized controller. It, acts, it has an objective function. It tries to minimize something. It tries to give an accuracy or you want to drive in the center of a lane. It does not take into any external issues. But coming to human, human drives with mood. You're happy, you drive in a different, you are sad or you are angry, you fight with someone, you, it shows into your driving behavior. So a lot of aspects goes into driving. Driving is not just driving. Driving is influenced by various external factors as well. How tired, how sleepy you are, how well you did the last day, everything. So the point what I want to stress is there is no scope for human intent in any existing of this one. What I'm trying to say is that if your car understands your intent, what you're going to do in the next, the car can actually adapt to the driver. So what we are looking at in the current shared control is we need to develop situational awareness. Driver should be well aware of the limitations as well. And also we need to take care of driver fatigue, inattentiveness during long travels. Also we need to keep driver in the loop. So when we are looking at all this thing, we are looking at driver monitoring system. That means if I'm sitting in the car, car needs to observe the driver. Car needs to understand driver emotion, driver intention, driver attention, all these aspects. So to do that, we need a lot of progress in sensing technologies and also all the bio signals, everything. But if you look now, we have a lot of smart watches and also we can have grip sensors on the steering wheel, gauge sensing in the camera. Most of the modern cars are trying to equip with all these sensors so that we can know whether the driver is attentive or not. So this is also very important. So we are trying to give driver behavior monitoring aspect into the car. So when we're looking at a car or any device, you know, when we have human and machine, we have to look at human machine cooperation. So human machine cooperation actually is in a very infancy in the sense we have a lot of human machine cooperation, but coming to applications, we have human as an operator and human as a supervisor in level one, level two, but what we require in future is human machine teaming. Okay, we don't have human machine teaming. That means when a human and a machine works together, we need to come up with the strategies or we, we need to come up with technology where we can form teaming as well. So this is very important because in this way we can have active interaction between humans and machine and also compensate for human faulty control or perform complex missions. Applications are immense. In future, we're going to have a lot of HMI, human machine interfaces, human... Uh, Vision cooperation and all these things will be the future technology. So coming to here, so requirement of technology for machines to understand human intentions and to act properly against changes. So we need technology that understands human intention. So if human intention 
can be involved into the control aspect machine can understand what human intend to do by doing that we can improve a lot of current technologies so if you look at uh, recent one of these progresses we have artificial vision nlp progressing for medical robots moving camera in natural language in one of the uh, applications and also we have behavioral control learning here manufacturing collaborative robot what action is the human is trying to do the machine actually looks at the human what he is trying to do and helps him maybe in lifting or even doing some precision task so the last one is a tesla car which you can see is an autonomous driving a based shared control that what we are looking into the future so they have skipped this slide so the most as important one is human centered shared control so i want to keep the human in the loop i don't want a fully autonomous car instead i want human to be the master or the supervisor so this is one of a project that is uh, supported by korean government we have uh, a good funding from the government so we have a team we are currently working on various aspects in this one so we have a cognition detection so we're going to use a lot of sensing information to have observe human behavior so we're going to use the human behavior and actually use make a decision making so we're going to have behavior decision based on imitation learning or reinforcement learning and so at the end we're going to go to control we have a lot of applications in mind from robots or collaborative robots in factory applications to autonomous vehicles so the aspect here is to understand human intent human behavior and and then use this one into the control loop or to the behavioral planning or control allocation planning and then do the final control so intent shared shared control i am not going into the specific mathematics here i would like to only show the block diagram of what the theory is so when a car is driving imagine you have a car and a driver intends to follow a particular path mission intends to follow a particular path so in this case if you have an intention if you are able to know the human intent i can actually bring the intent into the machine trajectory update and actually make sure that there is no conflict between the human and the machine by doing that i can actually get into the loop take an action from the shared controller so that i can give to the update so this is a basic uh, reward function we if you look into a reinforcement learning we have a reward and a state so we have the environment here we when we take the action it goes to the environment it gives the reward to the machine and the human so most of the time what happens is generally if you look into any of the shared control you can look into various schemes i am going to use only game theory so if you use a game theory generally you can also you can also have non cooperative behavior because when you have these two agents human and machine there will be conflicts and also there can be lot of non cooperations so when you have a non cooperative behavior if you have the intention if you know intention of the human you can actually convert the non cooperative behavior to cooperative behavior and achieve the equilibrium as well so this is theory in theory we want to do that in practice how do we actually do that is quite challenging so basics of reinforcement learning i am not going to detail is we have an agent and an environment we try to learn the aspect from the environment we give reward when actually it does a good job and we actually analyze it if it doesn't do a good job so we going to learn with the environment we learn as we progress so we what we are developing here is a game theory based reinforcement learning so we have a game theory what we are going to use is combine with the reinforcement learning between the human and the machine agent and try to actually develop a integrated reinforcement learning we are actually in the process of development and we have very good encouraging results in this so this is a overview of human intent centered shared control if you see we have a lot of sensing where we going to use uh, graph convolution networks or other one to, and, and also use this multimodal data to convert make a decision once we are able to identify the human intent so coming to human intent here we are going to have a binary aspect you know if the driver want to move to the left or to the right we are not only using the brain signal but we can have a lot of sensing if you if you are actually holding your steering wheel and if you intend to move left you're going to first watch the mirror back mirror side mirror and also your 
you know, your muscle contraction onto the left hand also changes. So we're going to have a grip sensor on the steering wheel. We're going to observe all human aspects. We're going to have a camera as well. So we're going to look into this one and try to decide what human want to do before he does. So by doing that, we are able to understand the path. So if the human thinks about one path and machine actually does it, one path. So what happens is, if we know what the path is taking, we can identify the conflict. So once we identify that the human and machine are doing opposite paths, we try to change the machine pattern. We are not going to suggest to the human. Machine adapts to the human. So it understands that the human want to take another path and it's update the path. So we provide a path update and in this way we're, we go, we're going to solve the conflict. So this is for uh, only for lane change at the starting point of our research. We are limiting to lane change. That means in a highway you have multiple lanes. So we are restricting it to lane change and few aspects. So conflict resolution. I mean it is a zoomed version of this one. If you see the possible path, the machine planner actually provides one of the path. When the human intention comes, you see human selected this path, machine selected this path. And then when the human intention comes, we, we give an update to the path so that the machine follows the human. By, by doing that, we are avoiding the conflict. And so, but they can never match. Human and machine never matches. So we're gonna take an average or give weightage depending on AI agent. So how, how we are gonna decide on the shade allocation is based on the driver behavior. So this is a human intention identification model. So we're gonna use a lot of sensor information. Easy is only for, uh, for uh, laboratory testing, we're going to uh, we are not going to use EEG for the practical application. So we have EMG gauge, hand grip sensor, and all other modalities going into this one, and we're going to develop a GCN network to classify the binary division. So we're going to mainly rely on EMG grip and gauge data, and we are going to use GCN to identify the intention. So this is a uh, hardware in-loop simulations where we are trying to do is experiments with various lane changes in the simulator. So by doing this, what we are trying to achieve is we are trying to involve human intent, human intention into the driving behavior and under the driving control room. Once your intention comes into play, it changes everything. So anyway, I think uh, I would like to end this talk here. I think uh, I would like to for acknowledge all the funding and uh, collaborative agencies for supporting this research. And uh, who, uh, this is my lab. If anyone has any questions or anything, you can actually refer to my link, CICL. is Cognitive Intelligence and Control Laboratory. So if you have any interest in your PhD program or if you have, we have complete scholarship, fully funded scholarship positions available, okay? It's merit-based. If you have merit, I can offer you quite good and I also can recommend to you good university. So we have, Korea is very good in education for any of this program, masters or PhD are completely funded. Student does not need to pay anything. In, in addition, you will be getting a quite handsome pay. All depends on your performance. What do I see? performance in fundamental courses, okay? If you're looking at EC, I would like to see digital communication, signal processing, control systems. Students who hate the most. <laughs> the subjects which you hate the most, that's what I'm gonna look. Your engineering mathematics course, your signal processing score, that is what I analyze. I don't look at your old CPA. I only want to look at your fundamental courses and how good you are. If you are good, you can actually attract full scholarship. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for sharing your expertise with us. It was very informative. Now we have keynote address by chief guest, Dr. Miguel Garcia Torres, Pablo de Olivet University, Spain. Sir will be addressing us on the topic, feature selection, trends, challenges, and applications. Please, sir. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the invitation. Nowadays, we are experiencing a data revolution. 
every device that we use, for example, has in some uh, kind of machine learning or artificial intelligence. For example, when we uh, have uh, or we are watching a streaming uh, TV, as for example Netflix, we can have some kind of recommendation. This recommendation uses data because nowadays data is as valuable as it can be gold or oil. Now, if, for example, we want to buy online in platform as, for example, Amazon or AliExpress, then once we have clicked on an item, we will get some recommendations. In order to know what other items are recommended, the platform has used machine learning or any other kinds of artificial intelligence technology. This is because people who usually buy the item in which I'm interested in also bought the other items that recommend us the platform. Now, if we want, for example, to go from one city to another one, of course, we will can get uh, through Google Maps any uh, the best path which is optimized. So, in summary, we can see that the technology has evolved a lot, and so it has made possible to make some data storage devices cheaper. So, companies are storing more and more data. This can be an advantage because they can have more information. However, there is a great drawback. The main drawback is that data analysis hasn't evolved in the same way. So there is a gap between data analysis and the large volume of data that we have. This is why machine learning is so important. Something uh, that I want you to talk about is about feature selection. In general, for example, when we have data from different devices, we are collecting very different uh, types of data. For example, we can have time series. Uh, if, for example, we measure temperature, humidity, etc. Then if we have a different uh, device, we will get uh, data from other nature. So mixed data from different nature can be very complicated. It makes it harder to analyze. A task very important is classification. We use classification every, every time. For example, if we have a photo about uh, animals, if we want to differentiate between uh, cats and dogs, for example, we will, we will want to classify these images. The more features, the more variables that we collect, usually here we can see that the performance of the classifier improves. However, there is at some level in which increasing the number of variables will decrease the performance of the classifier. Some of the reason for this is that increasing the number of variables Basically, we are adding noise. Furthermore, many features will contain the same information. And we have to remember that when we induce a classification model, we are just having a look, we are just searching a good set of rules to classify. So, we can see that the goal of feature selection is, is basically to search a good subset of features so that the performance of the classifier is the best one. So, sorry. So we can see that we have a classification problem. A classification which implies that we, we have to, or we need a performance metrics. Now we can see how the search, the feature selection algorithm works. Let's suppose that we have four variables. In this case, this is the search space. We can see here all the possible combination of subsets. Here, for example, this uh, consists of no feature selected. And in this case, it's the opposite. In this case, we will have all the feature selectors. All the intermediate uh, here levels, we imply that some of these features are selected. So we can see this problem as an optimization problem. 
so that the algorithm first finds a subset. We evaluate the subset, and then the algorithm finds another subset, and we evaluate. In this case, for example, if we are supposing that we are minimizing the error, then we can see that, for example, this subset of features is better than the first one. And so we will continue the search until a stopping criterion is met. Now, here we can see the different steps that has the feature selection. We can see that we need a strategy for the search. Then we also need a stopping criterion, a performance metrics, and a way, a method to validate the results. In general, here, the most difficult thing here is that we need a performance metric. However, this performance metric is usually different to the performance of the classifier. There is a gap in which will make harder to find a good subset of features. Uh, okay, so we can summarize the benefits of feature selection as follows. We can see, for example, here, the reduction in the cost of the acquisition data. That is because sometimes we can have many features that have the same information about the class level. However, some of the features are, are harder to acquire. So once we know what is the information that some feature has, then we can know which of them can avoid to extract. Another advantage that we can have is the comprehensibility of the model is better. Because the less features that we have, the better that we will can understand the classification model. Also, we can see that here we will have a faster way to induce the classification model. So another important thing is the overfitting. What does overfitting mean? Basically, uh, sometimes when we train the classifier, then we can see that once we evaluate the classifier on new data, the performance is much worse. This is the, re the main reason of this is overfitting, which implies that the model fits very good to the training data. So the capacity of generalization has been lost. And re uh, the dimensionality reduction will improve this issue. Another thing important is to remove redundancy. Basically because we don't need features that have the same information. And finally, we can see that a class, a classifier in general had a bad behavior when they have to face with high dimensionality data. This is another reason to apply feature selection. In general, feature selection is applied before the classification algorithm. So something important to say is that traditionally, feature selection has focused on relevancy. But what is relevancy? Well, relevancy is basically to know how much information has features about the label. However, we can see that relevancy depends on the context. For example, if we have an identifier, it will be very important for databases. However, it is not important for classification tasks, since it has no information about the output variable. Then we can differentiate between relevant and irrelevant features. In the case of irrelevant are features that has no information about the label, and so we can remove them. About relevancy, we can say that we can differentiate between a strong relevant and weak relevant features. Here we're going to see an example in which here we can uh, see uh, the function, the classification function, which is uh, not known in real life applications. Here we see that uh, the target function, we have x1 and x4. And here we can see that x4 and x2 
are uh, similar in value, knowing X4, we can know X2. And here, we can see another two features that are uh, uh, related. However, we can see that these two features are not present here. So, in order to know which, is, uh, which of these features are or not relevant, we can see that in the case of X5 and X3, because they are not here, they are irrelevant, this here. Then we can see that we cannot replace X1, so it's called a strong relevant feature. And finally, we can see that here we have X4, but we can replace X4 by X2. In the case that we had in X4, we could use X2 with the same capacity or with the same information. So these are called weakly relevant. The reason is that we cannot remove a strongly relevant feature without degrading the classifier. While in the case of weakly relevant feature, we can remove X4 if we have X2 and vice versa. So nowadays, in the scientific community, it's advancing by the, uh, with new concepts, with new definitions. In this case, we can see, for example, redundancy. Basically, redundancy is computed using correlation. However, it's not the same co uh, correlation and redundancy. Only in the case of perfectly correlated feature, we can see that it means that two features are redundant. Furthermore, we know that in classification tasks in general, for example, that highly correlated features, uh, despite the fact that they have the same information, they share a lot of information, it will improve uh, the classifier model. So we can see here that in the case of redundancy, for example, here we have an uh, input feature, here another input feature, and here is the class label. The, the thing is that here they are sharing information. Another concept in, uh, which is becoming very important is interaction. Interaction, for example, uh, it's some kind, it's different with respect to redundancy. Here in this image, we can see that it could be similar. However, in the case of interaction, we can see that when we combine two or more features that interact, then it means that the combined information is much bigger than the information that they have individually. So they have a synergic interaction. Another concept is complementarity, in which we can see that, for example, if uh, these two features, Fi and Fs, are complementarity is because there is some information in one of them which is missing in the other features. But despite the effort that the scientific community is doing in order to uh, define these two concepts, we can see in many papers different definitions. So depending on the author, we will have some or other definition and it's not clear nowadays. So what are the trends in feature selection? One of the trends would be here feature groupings. Classically, feature grouping has been faced by using clustering, another task in machine learning. However, now uh, it's becoming more important to use some theory information based metrics in order to cluster, to group features according to correlation so that features that belong to the same group are correlated or we can say that have shared information. Then we can see that another advantage of this approach is that we can reduce the search space. Uh, something that we must keep in mind is that feature selection in high dimensional feature selection and we, we have a large volume of data is very time consuming because in general algorithms 
are quadratics. So reducing the surge space is very important. Another uh, hot topic here is a stable feature selection. It is uh, known that if we could use infinite data, then we could get always the same solution. However, uh, we only use samples. So if we have run several times the algorithm, we will get different subsets. In some fields, as for example in medicine, it is very important stability because they want to study, for example, uh, how important is the information of a gene in order to identify, for example, skin cancer. So, the, how can we uh, study or analyze stability in feature selection or improve stability? Well, for example, here we can apply classical feature selection and then we can uh, uh, measure, for example, uh, using the Jacquard index, the stability of the solution that we have obtained after several runs for each algorithm. And then select the most stable features. Another possibility would be to run the algorithm on several samples and then to apply some kind of aggregation, some kind of of post-processing in order to select a stable uh, subset of features. And finally, I would like to highlight that applying group-based stable feature selection is another approach which basically is working with this, uh, the previous approach which I have explained with this. Because it is known that grouping features yield to more stable solutions. Then, here, okay. Another approach uh, that is becoming uh, very, very interesting is ensemble feature selection. In classification, it is well known that there exists ensemble classification, which combines classical techniques. In this case, what we do is basically to combine several feature selection algorithms. However, some step of this approach uh, require more work. For example, in this case, we don't know how, uh, what are the most optimal combination of the parameter or the hyperparameters of this approach. Another uh, open issue, for example, would be about the scalability mission. Uh, it is very important now that we are collecting large volume of data. Now that we have the big data approach, uh, in general, in big data, we can see a lot about clustering, classification, but not so much work about feature selection. And so this is another uh, challenge here. And finally, about explainability. You know, uh, in general, in machine learning, a drawback that it has is that it works as a black box. So, in most cases, we cannot understand the model. So, it is uh, very interesting and necessary to understand better the model, understand better the solution that provides us. Then, okay, sorry, okay. Another approach is multivariate feature selection. Why? Because classically, we are working with bivariate uh, metrics. For example, in the case of information theory, we can see that, for example, the entropy. Entropy basically is measuring the amount of uncertainty that the variable has. So we don't know the value of the, of the features. Then, okay, we have here another measure, which is information gain, that basically is a way to reduce the, or to, uh, to measure how the uncertainty is reduced by knowing another variable. 
in both cases, we can see that, that uh, we only measuring one or two variables. So we cannot measure interaction among three or more features. Now, we can see that in the community, they are making an effort in order to identify, in order to measure uh, basically interaction, because it will lead to, uh, will lead to better solutions. So now we are defining multivariate measures, but the main drawbacks is that are very time consuming. Another drawback is basically that some terms of, of these formulas, of this equation, are not well understood. And so it requires more work. And finally, we would like to say that, uh, for example, that in this case, the multivariate feature selection that most approaches in the community only take into account three variables. So we still need to handle several challenges. Some of these challenges, uh, for example, are the causality. As I have said before, uh, uh, for example, redundancy is computed using correlation. However, correlation and causality is not the same. Also, in most uh, studies, paper, uh, we only take into account correlation and we're assuming some kind of causality, but this is not true. This is another hot topic, however, it is very hard to identify causality in the solution. Another challenge that we face here in feature selection is, as I said before, big data. Now we can see some approaches. However, uh, there is uh, no as much work as we can see in classical approaches. Another would be here dynamic feature selection. In, for, because, for example, we assume that the information that has variables are always the same. However, it can change. Other uh, some time, after a while, we can see that the information of some variable can change and it is hard to identify how it is changing. So this is another challenge in the community. Of course, another uh, challenge that we have is future concepts. As I said before, there are uh, arising new concepts, but each concept has many definitions, and we need some a definition that be accepted by all the community because it can be confusing. If, for example, I talk about interaction, depending on the paper, we'll have a different definition which have different implication, have different, for example, behavior, the measures. And finally, another challenge is that we have to handle different data types. I said, as I said at the beginning of this talk, for example, uh, if we have to combine or to use a different data type because we have real values, categorical, ordinal, etc. It is not an easy task. And we will get a worse model, worse classification model. Uh, at the beginning of this century, uh, many measures, many metrics that try to use different uh, data from different data types were proposed. However, were not very successful because uh, different data types have different properties. So nowadays, if for example, we have to uh, use uh, categorical and numerical values, it is very typical to discretize the data so that we will work only with categorical data because it's preferred to use uh, data of the same uh, type. So, uh, Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, a hot topic that you... Thank you.
ಸರಿ ಮುಗಿಸ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಭಾಸ್ಕರ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಇದೆ ಕೇಳಿದೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ರೆಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ನೌ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಪ್ಯಾನಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಬೈ ಚೇರ್ ಐ ಸಿ ಚೇರ್ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಚೇರ್ ಎಂ ಡಿ ಸಿ ಆರ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮಾಡ್ರೇಟರ್ ಇಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾಜಶ್ರೀ ಜೈನ್ ವೈಸ್ ಚೇರ್ ಎಂ ಡಿ ಐ ಸಿ ವೈಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಮೇಕ್ ದ ಅರೇಂಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು we have dr rajshri jain with us let's briefly know about her dr rajshri jain is a professor at symbiosis institute of computer studies and research pune india she has more than 25 years of experience in teaching academic administration and research uh, she is an active member of professional organizations like ieee csi and national entrepreneurship network she will be moderating today's panel discussion the panel discussion is on from humble beginnings to an extraordinary journey of ieee members over to ma'am who will introduce the other members of the panel thank you and you can okay it's okay that's okay then good evening all of you i know like uh, girls making girls sit here till 6 o'clock is uh, i myself yeah so we don't take much of your time but i hope you will enjoy this uh, session the session is meant for you okay so uh, uh, once again good evening and uh, at the outset i would like to thank the uh, organizers for giving us this opportunity uh, to have a discussion on ieee membership i would like to know how many of you are ieee members so i can see very few hands raised and also i am very uh, happy that i am in a college where uh, it's meant for girls how many of you are women in engineering members let me see so i can again see uh, half the uh, hands raised in uh, out of uh, the earlier hands who are ieee members so you know like ieee brings in lot many opportunities to all of us so let us explore these opportunities and i am very very thankful that illuminaries and then distinguished members volunteers for years and years 
who are here have agreed to be on the panel today and it's my proud privilege to call upon our distinguished guests and panelists for the day today so uh, some of uh, these members were already introduced to you just in the interest of time i may cut short uh, uh, some of these introductions but please bear with me so i would request dr devabrata das chairperson ieee india council so you can carry your tea sir <laughs> so uh, to uh, come on stage and uh, uh, guide us on the uh, panel discussion and sir you know is the director of triple it bangalore and alumnus of iit kharagpur and list is very large i would like just to uh, say that he is a technical and steering empowerment committee member of multiple departments both go government of india as well as government of karnataka he is also recipient of number of awards so we are indeed privileged to have him here please a big round of applause to das sir the next you know uh, it's again our uh, uh, fortune uh, privilege today i would say because uh, one of the most influential cto uh, is amongst us today top 50 global ctos he received number of such awards in his career and uh, he is himself has more than 50 patents and then he himself has helped his organization none other than samsung how many of you use samsung mobiles so i can see more than i triple member right so uh, uh, samsung india to file more than 5000 patents and uh, welcome sir dr alok nath de chairperson i triple bangalore section he was round of applause to uh, alok nath de sir we we also have uh, professor uh, mohammad kasim kerala section chairperson a very very uh, active humble uh, uh, ieee volunteer i would rather use ieee evangelist whenever i speak to him i learn a lot about ieee the kind of connection that he has with ieee and ieee memberships and you know like uh, we are the privileged ones today to have him here to know about ieee membership sir please be on stage so we also have uh, the uh, member uh, dr uh, ravin uh, jadeja sir he is joining online online link is okay right <laughs> sir is uh, we are able to see on screen is it possible he okay so jadeja sir is uh, dean uh, and uh, director head of the department of csc department marwadi university and he was uh, treasurer ieee india council then former treasurer uh, of uh, uh, ieee region 10 currently he is the uh, chair for membership development committee ieee region 10 sir i hope you are in the meeting we welcome you here uh, 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 online but uh, believe me the class is full of uh, uh, girls uh, very very charming here welcome you sir so ma'am has already introduced me i am uh, currently handling the vice chair portfolio of membership development come august you know like it is all uh, we all try and uh, run these membership drives i am sure the uh, student branch chair who must be already planning some similar events in your student branch so to take you through uh, the benefits values and how i triple engages believe me when i say engage i'm going to engage you today you can see these attractive pens the moment you interactively uh, participate today whoever does uh, volunteers are already among you you will all receive these goodies it's not because these goodies you need to be engaged but i would like you to know the benefits of uh, uh membership benefit especially for i triple so uh, with this i would like uh, to begin the panel discussion here 
So, so shall I start from here only? Yes. So I think this is the best position to be here and then start our discussion. So this panel uh, aims in creating the awareness of, of IEEE, its value, and then how IEEE members are engaged worldwide. So it also tries to open up plethora of opportunities IEEE brings in, like you can see most of the Execom members today on the other side of the uh, auditorium. So the structured discussion, through this structured discussion, we are trying to lead and guide you uh, towards uh, member engagement programs of IEEE, better opportunities of uh, IEEE, and also benefits of IEEE in whatever possible time. So we'll not hold you up for longer times. The, we'll keep it as interactive as possible. So I am have, going to have only three questions. Rest of the questions will all come from you. And then there were, we had opened this for online also. I'm not sure how many online attendees have joined. I welcome online attendees also for this membership development panel discussion. And their questions were very, very uh, interesting. So there were more than 200 questions. So we are going to try and reply to those questions individually also. So to begin with, my first question to the panelists is uh, uh, about the word value. So when we say this word value, you know, like when you look into the dictionary meaning, it says something worth of some rupees or some currency. So monetary it speaks. But in real life, value means more, a lot more, sometimes beyond any measurable currency or any measurable quantity. So uh, being an IEEE member, all three of you, for so many years, what value did IEEE membership has brought to you, sir? So I request uh, maybe Das, sir, to start with. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rajeshri, uh, 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 Jan, for hosting this panel. Students, thank you. Please listen carefully because these are the value. When I was a student like you, uh, I started working for IEEE as a volunteer, but as a student member. But that gave me, that was the one part. But the other part which gave me in my life from starting is that due to this various attending the meetings or presentation, I came to know that where to go for searching for my areas of studies and the papers and which built our life for last 40, 30 plus years after knowing as a student member. So the value means it has two parts. One is professional or the or the technical part, which we learn by the getting the leads. Leads means that, it's, for an example, somebody presented an URL today. And, or somebody talks about that these are the things available, these are the places. So that is one side. Second thing is very important in IEEE, what I found, which I told to my students after being when I started teaching and research with my students, then I told them, you see, my area of research has been the computer networks. And computer networks, there are routers or wireless communication, you know, gigabit, terabit, all the speed you know. But let me tell you, the human network is much faster and reliable sometimes I felt than the wireless network. That means if you have a trusted human network of knowing each other, and you can you can rely and communicate for any of the works you need for professionally or also in a right way, and it can be done in a better way. In that sense, I said. So that means this value has been a human to human contact or hum human to a particular organization contact. Those things happen as a, we are in computer science area or electronics area or EC area, any of these areas happen in a big way. That also added the value in a huge way, which we cannot measure in our life. And the lastly, the last point is the value addition has professional and also the trust and the networking with the humans. And the third one is the satisfaction. By giving away now, by doing this kind of conferences, workshops, doing the social service in many ways, that's huge human satisfaction to building of the next generation or, or any of your colleagues and peer. That, that gives us immense uh, happiness sometimes that which we cannot measure in in, in numbers or, or, or any monetary forms. 
So these are the three values I can see in a big way, which IEEE has given to uh, given to me or, or, or broadly all of us in that direction. So I uh, with this, I just want to stop because these are the initial things, three things I said. Now I will uh, yes, sir, you can pass, on pass on to Dr. Alok. No, I think, uh, you know, many a times we, uh, again, thank you, uh, Dr. Rajasri, for moderating this. It is a very important point. Many a times people mix it up, you know, the cost of these memberships with the value and they are not able to equate. Now, again, uh, the cost is membership is maybe 1,000 rupees. Uh, even halfway, half yearly membership is 540. But many people say, I'm not able to afford Okay, that's understandable, but many has it, but they don't see value. And it's effectively, you know, people who choose between seeing two movies and not taking, let's say, IEEE membership, that's 500 rupees, or maybe four coffees, and that's it. So it is a very relative thing. I just want you to introspect in the career that you have for the whole life, what role does it play? And again, please try to understand the values are seen philosophically three ways. One is a perceived value. Someone you ask, they didn't see a value. You just formed an opinion that there is no such value and therefore I don't become. Right? That's a perceived value. Now, if you go to a right person who has been there with many years, possibly that perceived value itself can be high. So perceived value is something that we are hearing and we are trying to decide. Then there is a real value. Real value is what IEEE has defined. Like in this book, I was seeing leadership opportunities, gain expertise, connect and collaborate, career resource, scholarships and grants. We have given Bangalore section this year, 30 students, 10,000 rupees scholarships, and we are keeping on growing that. Awards and recognition, humanitarian projects, international conference attending, and discounts of various nature. This is an offering, and I'm not even listing insurance that we have or other things, the travel grant people give, the associations that we have. Professor Das already told about the networking. This, if we add it up, all of them, that's already a real value that is being offered. Third thing is, which what successful people do, not perceived, not real, derived value. Derived value is, I already am getting this. This is what is prescribed. That's what most of the people take it. But I can derive additional benefit. The network is net worth. The people that we have in the network, if you are joining a job, and God forbids, but these days with a lot of difficulties, sometimes we might lose jobs or have difficulties. Where do you go? Who can help you in professionally? All our parents and others are able to give a lot of guidance. But when it comes to professional, you need to connect with the professional people. So I think this is a, a derived benefit that I will say. And uh, just the last point I wanted to highlight is there are other times, you know, earlier days, it used to be uh, people used to join a jump company and retire from there. In Japan, if you go, like many people have joined a company and their whole life, 30, 35 years, 40 years, they have stayed with a company and retired. These days, uh, many people are trying to do that. That's great. But many a times jobs are uncertain and there are other opportunities and people hop. So therefore, you are not stable in possibly in that career growth, right? You might have to change jobs for whatever reason, either your own growth or difficulties that come. When such things come, you need a stable anchor point. And IEEE is one such place, I won't say the only place, but definitely it's a professional home where you can base and you keep connected with your people. And even if you change your jobs, you can continue this as a base. So you need home the way you have a home. This we believe for many of us has been serving as a professional home. So that's what I would say as a value. Thank you. Excellent, sir. Excellent. 
So uh, I would also request uh, uh, Kasim sir. Thank you, Rajshri Jain ma'am. And uh, for all of your information, right now, maybe half an hour ahead, we have 399,442 members in IEEE globally. So, an IEEE member means one among this 399,442 IEEE members. So we can be proud of such a big community. And this IEEE is spread across 190 countries and divided into 10 regions, region 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, and we come under region 10. And it is an Asia-Pacific countries and again we come under India Council and India Council was formed in 1976 and before the formation of India Council we were having only one section in India and that was the India section then we started uh, having different sections and currently we are having 13 sections across India then under section, we do have different organizational units. This section is having subsections, okay? So Mysore is a subsection and uh, I belongs to Kerala section and we do have two subsections, the Kuchi subsection and the Malabar subsections. And uh, we have uh, across the globe 344 sections and you can be proud that the Bangalore section and the Kerala section stands globally number two and number three in terms of membership count. And India Council is the largest among all the councils across the globe. That is also we can proud of. And globally we are having 87 subsections and 2,717 chapters and chapters means in IEEE we are having 39 society chapters just like computer society chapter, robotics and automation society chapter, power and energy society chapter, circuits and systems society chapter, then so many, so many, 39 society chapters. It can be any, all the sections can have their own society chapters and Bangalore is having 30 society chapters and Kerala is having 15 society chapters. Then four affinity groups and on, on, and the four affinity groups are the consultants network, the young professionals, then life member affinity group. affinity groups across the globe and 980 student branch affinity groups and the only student branch affinity group is the women in engineering affinity group and I joined IEEE in 1986 as a professional member as the part of formation of a student branch at my college that is at TKM College of Engineering and I was a counselor for six years from 88 to 92 and on the second spell 2008 to 2009. So I was uh, now approaching the students of various classes and in those time it was a circuit branches means electrical, electronics, computer science and IT and in 1980s and 1990s only professionals and students belonging to these streams, circuit branches, were admitted to IEEE. Now they have changed and all the students and professionals of engineering can join IEEE as members. Then in addition to that, students and professionals of mathematics, physics, then management, law 
and medicine can join us at play members and the membership of uh, student members was 27 dollars till 2020 and with the start of the covid I typically introduced a discount of 50% and the student membership dues became $13.5 in 2020, 2021 and 2022. And they uh, now with the 50% discount and graduate student members were also with $27 as membership dues. Now from 2023, the graduate student members were retained at the $27 and the student members were reduced the dues to $14, which as uh, our sir said, coming to 1,080 rupees for 2023 membership. And if you join membership after August 15th, you have to join the membership with full dues, $14, and it is coming to 1,080, and this membership is valid up to 31st December, 2024 that means 16 plus more months so the value of i triple is one as it is already tell the networking opportunities that you get now i am connected with the top i triple volunteer that is the i triple president and he is none other than dr saifur rahman he is the i triple president of uh, i triple for 2023 and region 10 director then uh, other associates and india council chair bangalore section chair and so many persons and i do get chances to go and attend different section congress also all on the expense of i to play and we need not uh, spend cash from our pocket to attend these functions because i to play supports all these activities we we have to spend our time we have to take membership and spend our time for volunteering. Excellent, sir. Excellent. And one more thing. Now, my email ID is smkasim at itably.org. And at itably.org, that email ID, only itably members can have. It is a recognition or identification that you belong to itably community. And the student opportunities are very, very wide. You are getting lot of chances to organize projects, competitions, and humanitarian activities projects also. And fundings are all given to student branches and student branch chapters. SSC, a solid state circuit society, gives to the tune of $2,000 per year to a chapter. Power and Electronics Society gives $250 as annual activity fund. Then Computer Society gives 500 and above. Sir, and I think in the next question, yeah. we'll take up these societies. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, all these are very important. Girls, sir said like IEEE is present in how many countries? Just raise your hands so that you have your pen. Raise your hands. Who knows the answer? I am sure volunteers are already monitoring and they will. Pen, yes, yes, sir. Yes. So uh, we have uh, standing there. Please, please come forward. Pick, run, and then collect it from IC chair. No, sir, it's okay. Ha, ha, sir. How many you said? 190. Come, come, come. Running. <laughs> Sir. Yes. Yes. So the next question is how many uh, how many rupees or how many dollars is IEEE membership for students? This this girl in black attire, please come. One, two, third row. Ha, come, come. Come, come running. What odd answer you gave? Come, come. Fourteen dollars. Please come. Please come. <laughs> sir. <laughs> Come running. Good, good, good. 
so uh, uh, jadeja sir this question is especially for you and then after your question also there are questions to our audience so uh, you know like conferences like uh, uh, in this khan so there are many conferences and this is one of the uh, major areas of uh, ieee i would say they hold around 2000 conferences every year so that means uh, daily uh, almost three conferences happening somewhere so which uh, the uh, the major uh, feature of these conferences is though ieee sponsors it's never uh, not uh, compulsory mandatory that only ieee members participate in it so most of our conference attendees like when i asked in the audience how many are ieee members i can see more than 100 plus sitting here but hardly 10 15 hands raised in that means most of them are non ieee members so i would like you to brief them how to uh, become ieee member sir already has explained about uh, the membership fees and then future 50 uh, kind of developing country codes etc so hope i am audible to you sir jadeja sir jadeja sir meeting time sir it is still there uh i can see him in the meeting uh, jadeja sir hope you are uh, listening to us there is so much of lag sir yes sir yes, sir your voice is okay so uh, once again say hi to us sir no no sir we are unable to hear sir we are unable to hear they are just ha ah, sir yes rajshri madam yes yes sir yes sir you are now audible sir go ahead sir sir you are audible Hello. please go ahead sir sir you are audible hello yes yes sir please speak hello i think i think it is okay we are able to hear okay okay, okay. Thank, thank you thank you so i think uh, uh, rajshri madam uh, coming to your questions uh, uh, there are lots of benefit to become the members and rightly you said that every year i triple is hosting more than 2000 conferences throughout the year so this is the biggest platform for the ieee members to create their own network so if you are a member definitely you are going to connect with 4 lakhs members of ieee across the globe including region 1 to region 10 so rightly said by professor kasim that if you become member then you can become a family members of 4 uh, lakhs member right so this is the value and this is the power and potential of ieee membership and those who are a students member there are lots of benefit directly involved and uh, let me just highlight few benefits uh, a few benefits if you are a member students member then they can become ieee extreme programming competitions uh, they can involve in this competitions they can apply for students award program they can apply for students scholarship to attend various conferences across the globe they can apply for students travel grant rightly professor kasim again said that you can be uh, apply for the travel grant for various conferences as well as various events of ieee also you can also contribute to ieee potential magazine you can also contribute to ieee mentorship program you can be member of move movement community outreach international program you can take societal uh, membership and you can contribute to the professional society also and if you want to learn something for leadership then center for leadership excellence is also available and the biggest advantage to become member is ieee collaborate where you can connect with four lakhs members across the globe various uh, wi programs are there vip programs are there so these are the directly benefits and value the students are getting in terms of definitely conference is the right platform across the globe where we can connect with the students as well as with the various members and the biggest uh, opportunity and value what i understand is 
we can connect right this is the value i can connect with uh, kerala sections i can connect with bangalore sections i can interact with uh, professor devrata das i can uh, interact with uh, dr lakhnak day i can interact with professor rajshri and professor kasi this is the biggest power of uh, ieee membership so that's all from my side rajshri next questions thank you so much sir uh, so we are already as you know running very Madam? late i am uh, actually uh, cutting it short so we are opening the questions to the audience sir if they have one or two questions and because they are uh, eagerly waiting to leave the room because their bus is leaving so uh, one or two questions quick questions from audience whoever will ask questions again whoever ask the questions we have goodies for you also <laughs> so any question please yes what are the missions of i tribali um to the students so there are uh, brochures printed already and uh, i request ashwan to uh, distribute these brochure and then it is written in that so one major thing that you can remember advancement of technology for the benefit of humanity so anything that you do but it has to be for humanity yeah sir is already showing it so uh, i just would like to sum it up because of uh, the time uh, uh, that we have had uh, earlier or itself also we had when we saw the questions we were discussing among ourselves we would need more than 2 hours to answer each question but i think it was very fruitful and i know like most of you woke up and were very active running around here so uh, uh, i know like all the points which our uh, 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 speakers spoke about be it the details of all the IEEE societies, IEEE members. Also, it was very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. And, uh... I also would like to thank uh, uh, the uh, India Council and also Region Ten, IEEE Region Ten, for for hosting. <laughs> yeah, please join. Okay. <coughs> no, no, no. Please. My feedback on second. That's yeah. okay, ma'am. I think. Yeah, please. <laughs> That's please. okay. Yeah, That's please. Okay. No, please. So yes, thank you so much. I would uh, like to thank India Council as well as I Triple E Region Ten for providing this opportunity, and big thanks to I Triple E Bangalore section also. Thank you, sir. Students, refreshment is on. Uh, arrange in uh, D block. Please wait for a second. Go ahead. Go ahead. students be seated be seated another 10 minutes we are winding up another 10 minutes and refreshment is arranged in d block after that you can have that and then leave uh act actually we have to two of our i triple executive members whose certificates were not given previously so i just announce their name i would request them uh, dr shivashankar sir please come over the dais dr das das sir will distribute the certificate dr shashidhar sir Next we have. Next we have. Uh, because the bus is leaving. So, one or two questions, quick questions from audience. Whoever asks questions. Again, whoever asks the questions, we have goodies for you also. <laughs> so, any question, please? Yes. What are the missions of I Tripoli uh, to the students? So there are uh, brochures printed already, and uh, I request Ashwan to uh, distribute these brochures, and then it is written in that. 
So one major thing that you can remember: advancement of technology for the benefit Students, of humanity. So anything that you do, but it has to be for humanity. Yeah. So for example, already showing. Yeah. So anything that you do, but it has to be for humanity. Yeah. So there is already showing it. So uh, I just would like to sum it up One because of uh, the time uh, uh, that we have had uh, earlier on itself. Also, we had when we saw the questions, we were discussing among ourselves. We would need more than two hours to answer each question. But I think it was very fruitful, and I know like most of you woke up and were very active running around here. So uh, uh, I know like all the points which our uh, uh, have the speakers spoke about the de details of all the IEEE list. societies, IEEE members, uh, first, also it was Dr. very good. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. I also would like to thank uh, uh, the moderator, Dr. Rajeshree Jain, Madam will give away the uh, token of appreciation to Dr. Dr. Devaki Kadastar. <laughs> No, no, no. Next panelist, Dr. Alok Nath Jaisal. Please, please, please. So, yes. Thank you so much. I would uh, like to thank India Council as well as IIT Bangalore Bank for providing this opportunity. And big thanks to IIT Bangalore section also. Thank you, sir. Student refreshment and arrange in D block. Please stay for a second. Now I request Dr. Devabrita Das sir to give away the token of appreciation to Dr. Rajshri ma'am. Yes. So please meet here. Please meet here. Another ten minutes. So I mean, another ten minutes. And the speak block. After the impact. The next appreciation goes to Dr. Parmesh Achari BD. Uh, Dr. Das sir will give away the token of appreciation. So the next token of appreciation goes to Mr. Eshwan, student volunteer. Student professional volunteer. IEEE please student professional volunteer. Anirudh, IEEE student professional volunteer. Next, we have. Next, we have. Next, my UV student volunteer. Thank you. So, girls, yes. more thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you all for the brainstorm session. Now let's hear about the industry talk by Mr. Jairam and Sir, led by Ms. Neha Rani. Ms. Neha Rani is the leader for electronics and electrical engineering and customer support organization in Boeing, India, Engineering and Technology Center in Bangalore. She comes with 15 years of experience. She comes with 17 years of experience in the aerospace domain, of product development, of systems, for commercial and defense aircraft, driven by her passion for engineering excellence. She takes pride in providing professional leadership, capitalizing to be successful and creating value for us. Organization. She was recognized as technology rising star by the Women of Color STEM Conference 2021. Ms. Neha will be addressing on the topic intelligent connectivity and aerospace perspective. Madam, please take over. Madam, please take over. 
Hi everyone, just a quick check. Am I audible? Hi everyone, quick check, am I audible? Okay, uh, I've got a thumbs up that I am audible and uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Welcome to everybody in uh, Enriscon 2023 and uh, I am Neha. I am the leader of electronics and electrical engineering and customer support engineering from Boeing India. I'm really honored and pleased to be here today and uh, you know really want to start off a little bit with you know what is it that uh, we do at Boeing. So really our mission and purpose at Boeing is to connect, protect, explore and inspire the world through the innovation in the aerospace field. And with this as the backdrop, I'm really going to start uh, diving into what we do and what is our presence in India. So Boeing in India is a well-established um, you know, cohort with over 5,000 employees and wherein we have more than 80 plus partnerships. There is one joint venture with Tata where we manufacture the Apache fuselages. Uh, one billion dollars of sourcing is done annually out of uh, Boeing in India. And we are also very active in the uh, communities. There are 20 plus R&D university partnerships that uh, we participate into. This is a very quick glimpse of how Boeing is developing and continues to grow in India. There are three major entities, as you can look at. Uh, there is a Boeing Defense India, which really deals with all the direct defense contracts within India for the Indian government. And uh, I already spoke about the JV. What you see at the center is the Boeing India Engineering and Technology Center, uh, which is really the design house uh, within the Boeing company in India. A very quick glimpse of all the key platforms uh, that are there in India. Uh, 
the first one to the extreme left is the Boeing commercial space, wherein uh, we have almost the entire uh, family present here, starting from 37, uh, the 747, 57, 777, and 87. And as you see, the major customers here are Air India, SpiceJet, Blue Dart, Vistara. Moving on to the defense side, the, again, the key platforms in India are uh, C-17, the P-8I, uh, we also have the Air Force One or the head of state as we call it, the Chinook helicopters, Apache helicopters, and so on. Going to the Boeing Global Services, this is where we work hand in hand uh, with the country and the entire global Boeing to provide aircraft maintenance, uh, skilling of all the technicians and the line maintenance personnel, pilot trainings, and there are a lot of initiatives that are going on around the digital aviation space, around uh, managing the air traffic, also on the airspace optimization, and so on. A little bit of details on what we really do in the design center. So the Boeing India Design Center is right now located in two places, which is Bangalore and Chennai. And there are three or four key themes that really go on within this design center. We have a research and technology division, uh, which does a lot of critical work on the should cost design, the material and health management. And this is where a lot of research goes on on the upcoming technologies and also, you know, updates and refinements on the existing technologies. Then we have test and evaluation, uh, which is where a lot of testing happens, whether we are talking about the flight test design or the structural test design, both of it. The next one is the engineering and digital aviation products, uh, which is again more to do with the crew operations, uh, the entire airline operations and the airspace optimization as well. And we also have, along with it, the entire aircraft product development work that goes on in the different uh, streams within the design center. We have an IT division that works on all the digital transformations, data analytics, emerging technology like IoT, and so on. Now, having said that, I'm sure a lot of you have already read that uh, Boeing is building a 43-acre state-of-the-art facility in Bangalore, in Devanhalli, and this is one of the first design centers that Boeing is building outside of the U.S. So, uh, this is a great achievement, and again, a uh, just looking at the entire landscape of how India is growing, uh, Boeing is definitely playing a very critical role and contributing uh, to the entire growth within India. Now, this is a little bit about Boeing and you know, connecting it to what we are here for, which is around the uh, learning systems and the computational intelligence. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit on intelligent connectivity, which is really you know, Boeing's DNA. Now, why do I say that is because whether we talk about commercial space or the defense space, all of the systems within the aircraft, whether we are talking about systems or systems of systems, they all need to be seamlessly connected. Now let's talk about what this means in the uh, uh, aerospace or, or in the commercial segment. Now, when we look at the commercial segment, what are really the key drivers uh, which really enhance the entire commercial space? One, the ever-increasing levels that are expected for passenger comfort and uh, passenger safety. The need to optimize the resources which are used by the ground and the in-flight crew and the maintenance personnel. And third but not the least, the stringent norms and regulations that need to be followed. Given that these are really the drivers the need for today is to ensure that 
all the multiple stakeholders that are present in the entire value chain of the aircraft development and the operations are connected and the five key parameters which are mentioned here really contribute to developing that entire integrated network infrastructure whether we are talking about on board connectivity where it is all about connecting really the uh, avionics flight deck to the aist or to the in flight entertainment systems or whether we talk about the um, ground to the satellite or the in flight connectivity and how these all of these systems talk to each other are they interoperable or not and again all of this lies on the backbone of information of data data is what really helps get the connection and to able to to be able to manage data we really need the right information architecture and as well as the ability to process and evaluate data in order to present or perform analysis and derive inferences out of it so really let's look at an example that uh, will help us relate to what does it mean uh boeing is working on this initiative called as the smart networked cabin uh this is an initiative which really aims at uh, in at obtaining the information from the cabin and transferring it to the ground so that it can be used for multiple kind of and and provide important information back to the relevant stakeholders see again at the end the intention is how do we streamline the operations and how do we provide best in class passenger safety and experience now what happens is let's look at this smart cabin for example where we have the uh, galleys the toilets the seats surfaces overhead cabin everything connected to each other now when this data is collected the airlines as an example can use this data to understand that how the health of the cabin is and they can plan for their maintenance in advance they can also look at what kind of faults or snags exist and they can prepare the ground personnel so that the right actions can be taken and at the end again this is all about increasing the um, aircraft availability which is again you know revenue for the airlines and at the same time ensuring that we keep providing safer flights all throughout moving to the defense systems now uh, let's look at um, let's look at the defense systems what is the need here uh, the need here is really uh, to be able to look at you know what kind of system behavior and accurate you know situational awareness <clears throat> which is critical for network centric warfare or battle management systems is being provided now what does this really involve this involves the real time and secured transmission of the mission critical parameters with the different stakeholders which are at different layers now when i'm referring to layers here we are talking about the ground layer or the aircraft layer uh, or or the space layer you know the the time is of essence and at the same time uh, to be able to provide all of these parameters really in a snap of a time is what is critical here now how can this really be achieved this can be achieved by a network of high resolution sensors high bandwidth sensor carriers and command and control centers these are really the key components um, which need to be able to get connected take in data evaluate or process the data and give out uh, the inferences or the real time data to the different stakeholders another example here is where boeing is working with a company called shield ai 
to enable the flying of the military aircrafts in highly contested environments or in areas where um, the gps operations are denied and again you know flying in swarms is something uh, which is very critical to different missions whether we are talking about um, you know air combat missions or even non combat missions as well now we already spoke about commercial and defense and uh, let's move on to the production systems of the future now while we were talking about the entire life cycle of the aircraft right from the development to the operations the smart factories are what um, which are really involving a lot of connected systems as a necessity uh, to be able to process and evaluate data so that the efficiency can be involved and uh, evolved and at the same time productivity improvements can be fetched for the aer aerospace business now we are all familiar with uh, smart homes you know where with a click of a button multiple operations are conducted or at the same time even notifications are provided now let's apply this to aerospace and let's imagine if we are able to get into a situation in a factory where a mechanic can use a wireless device or a handheld device and this mechanic can do measurements of the fuselage or the wing without really having to go and step into that airplane right in similar way there are multiple sensors in the aircraft uh, which provide data to the technicians or the relevant stakeholders and let them know that an equipment is close to its um, uh you know the fatigue life or an equipment needs a recalibration now these are the kind of improvements uh, that uh, we as a company are working on uh, which will help us really to thrive and create these smart factories again boiling down to the fact that uh, smart factories connected systems all of this is the future of intelligent connectivity uh in the interest of time i would really like to summarize that uh, for us to be able to integrate all of these intelligent systems it is vital and uh, it will enable us to have a more sustainable environment and this is what will really revolutionize aerospace whether we are talking about defense or commercial or the smart factories as well um uh, taking inspiration from a quote from dean kamen who was the inventor of uh, segway everybody has to be able to participate in the future that we want to live for and intelligent connectivity connected systems is one of the ways to do it uh with that uh, i would like to thank all of you to lend me a patient ear and all the best to the organizing committee and in this con 2023 for a great uh, program ahead thank you